Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku could command meteorological energy. If you guys enjoy this movie comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story Nucking Futs from Fanfiction.net so let's start the video. It was another rainy day. Izuku. Izuku. But in the Midoriya household, it was nothing but precious moments. Crouched and hidden underneath a blanket, Midoriya and Ko called for her little hero in an overly dramatic voice. Cupping her hands around her mouth, she called out again. Come save me Izuku. I am here. Cried Izuku as he burst into the room. Giggling madly in his excitement, he leapt towards his mom who happily caught him in her arms and spun him around. You're my hero, Izukun. She laughed along with him. Hearing those words from his mom made Izuku's small heart expand even more. Like any kid his age, he was rightfully upset at the gloomy weather. It meant he couldn't go outside. But when his mom offered to play with him inside, he couldn't contain his excitement. No one paid much attention when the dark clouds started to clear, even though it was mentioned to rain all day. Weather forecasters made mistakes once in a while, so no one gave it much thought when only a few minutes ago the clouds were dark and the rain soaked anyone it can, because now the sun was shining and the skies were clear. Nobody noticed Izuku's quirk had manifested in that one moment, not even the boy himself. It wasn't until he was four, going five in a couple months, that anyone really noticed. Despite it all, it wasn't a very pleasant memory for Izuku at all. Ta! Huh. Small tiny explosions accompanied the exclamation. Eyes watering, Izuku frowned at his best friend. Take it be back Kakin or what, Deku? Said boy only smirked haughtily at him. As her only friend, I'm just being honest with you. Behind him, his two other lackeys snickered. Shaking his head, Izuku squeezed his eyes shut, not caring about the tears rolling down his cheeks. You're wrong, he cried out. Katsuki only scowled at him. I'm not. Everyone knows Auntie only pretends for your sake. She knows you can never be a hero. Izuku took a shaky breath as more tears rolled down his face. No, she said. He hiccuped. She said I was her little hero. If anyone noticed the ominous clouds rolling in, they paid it little attention. Right now, Bakugo was teasing Izuku again, and this time the results were much different. It wasn't odd to see the head-headed blonde tormenting the smaller boy. What was surprising was how Izuku was taking it. They hadn't ever seen him cry like that before. Leaning closer, Katsuki poked him harshly in the chest. She was lying b-o-o-o-m. As if on cue, the sky roared and the rain broke free. Everyone screamed as the thunder rang out close to their little hearts, the rain almost literally pelting them with its intensity. It was sunny just a few minutes ago. Someone shouted. In the middle of it, Katsuki stood with his gaze fixed on the sky. What the heck? In front of him, Izuku was shaking as sobs racked his entire little body. He wasn't aware of the panic going on around him, nor was he really bothered by the cause of it. I hate you those three words brought Katsuki out of his stupor. W what did you say? Still shaking, Izuku looked up to meet Katsuki's eyes. Above them, lightning flashed and thunder chased it. But none of those things were the reason Katsuki took a shaky step back. Izuku's eyes were, I know, swallowing deeply. Four-year-old Izuku tried to give Katsuki his best glare. I don't want to be your friend anymore. His shout was accompanied by another roar of thunder. This time, this one managed to cause a few cracks to form in their school window, and the students to hold their ears. It was so loud, so terrifying, it shook their small bodies. All except Katsuki. No, the words that come out of the small boy's mouth shook him more than the sudden weather ever could. What the hell? I'm your only friend Deku. You can we're not friends anymore Bakugo. Even despite the loud thunder, Izuku's words rung out across the class. And before Katsuki could stop himself, he had Izuku's shirt clenched in his fist and dragged the smaller boy closer to him. You're not supposed to stop being my friend Deku. Before Izuku could reply their teacher ran out with clear panic in her eyes. It's time to come inside. She shouted over the pounding rain and roaring thunder. Nobody moved from their spot. All their attention focused on the two boys arguing. Nobody really expected this to happen at all. Following their gaze, the teacher saw little Katsuki shaking a crying Izuku, both of them drenched from head to toe. Making a quick decision, she made her way over and separated the two. Enough of this, whatever is going on here can wait. You need to she cut herself when her gaze landed on Izuku. How hadn't she noticed that before? Getting on one knee, she looked Izuku in the eyes. Izuku, your eyes are glowing. W what? He stammered. They've been glowing this entire time. Katsuki growled behind her, watching Izuku with an unreadable expression. It all clicked then. The sudden thunderstorm appearing literally out of nowhere. The fact the weather seemed especially bad in their area. And Izuku's glowing white eyes. Izuku, sweetie she spoke slowly. Your quirk is doing this here she gestured towards the almost black clouds. My quirk. He blinked at her and slowly the white faded from his eyes revealing his bright green eyes once more. 
I have a quirk. He breathed, more to himself than anyone else. Almost as quick as it came, the sky began to clear. Gone were the once heavy rain, the blinding lighting, and the booming thunder. Instead they were replaced by a bright sun, and a cool breeze ruffling through their drenched clothes. The teacher couldn't help but watch in amazement as it all happened. That was, so cool. A random student screamed. Then all around there was a chorus of agreement from the others. Only Katsuki kept his gaze fixed on Izuku. He didn't cheer along with his classmates. He thought it was cool, like the others around him but he could still hear Deku's words. And it really bothered him. That's a really special quirk you have Izuku. I've never seen anything quite like it at her words. Izuku smiled again and looked up at her. He frowned when he finally noticed her state and looked around at the playground to find it almost flooded and his classmates in a similar state to their teacher. I am sorry. I didn't mean to. He was cut off as she only hugged him and patted his head. You don't have to apologize pulling away she smiled at him. It wasn't intentional. But now you'll have to work on controlling that power you have there, okay? Izuku frantically nodded his head in agreement. I will. I promise I won't do something so scary again she laughed and stood back up. Alright Katsuki watched as she ushered the others back inside. Then turned back to the other boy smiling down at his hands. I can be a hero. Izuku whispered to himself, but Katsuki heard. Deku head snapping up. Izuku's eyes focused on Katsuki's form. He had forgotten the boy was still there, but he hadn't forgotten his words. So he squared his shoulders and pouted while walking away from the other boy. It's Midori Akatsuki didn't respond. He didn't move until the sound of the door closing reached him. Only then did he clench his fist and allowed a few tears to escape. Despite all the things he tells Izuku, he never truly expected the boy to leave him. Izuku age 5 sitting at the table his feet dangling off the edge. Izuku excitedly wrote down everything he knew about his quirk. So far he hadn't made it rain again, especially now that he was trying to keep control. Nonetheless, he was still put off about it. Even when he tried, he couldn't make a big storm like last time. Giving it some thought, he tapped his pencil against his lip as his mom went around the kitchen preparing dinner. Last time I did something like that. It was because Bakugo quickly he shook his head, not at all wanting to think about that. Maybe he'll forget about the big stuff and instead focus on the little stuff, furrowing his brows in concentration. Izuku tried to manipulate the air currents to lift his notebook in the air. It was harder than he thought. Soon he was straining his whole body, trying to get the stupid book to move a little. For all his effort, Izuku got nothing but a small toot of air escaping him instead. He squeaked in embarrassment and slammed his head on the table. Ape. The sound of his mother crying out and the sound of pots hitting the floor had him out of his chair and running to the kitchen in an instant. Mom, hearing his approach, Inko turned to her son a little perplexed. Izukan. She breathed out slowly. Did you do this? She asked him, gesturing to her hair. Quickly, Izuku covered his mouth to prevent any sound from escaping. It was currently autumn, and his mom had the proof of that all over hair. There were leaves everywhere. He could stop any sounds from escaping but he couldn't stop his shoulders from shaking or his eyes from watering. His mom looked ridiculous with her hair blown back and leaves sticking out of it. MSS sorry mom looking down at him, she saw how her small bean was trying to not laugh at her. Smiling back, she tilted her head and he burst out giggling. You're really going to be sorry now, Izuku-kun, she said, immediately giving chase. Ah, uh, save me, save me. Izuku giggled and ran off. Later Izuku would jot down his observations. For now he was having too much fun. Izuku could manipulate air currents. Izuku still age 5 it was a quiet night in the Midoriya's apartment. And Ko having not too long tucked her son into bed, relaxing on the couch, she let her thoughts wander to her best friend Mitsuki and her little boy. The mother had called again, asking once more if Izuku was up for a play date with young Katsuki. It hurt her heart when Izukun shook his head, rejecting it completely. With a heavy heart, she told her friend he still refused to talk to Katsuki and the woman sighed tiredly before saying okay. If she heard the smallest hint of hurt in Katsuki's voice during the call, she chose not to comment. And Ko had no idea why her son was so adamant about not seeing the other. Every time she asked he would just close off from her. She resigned to her fate of simply not knowing after the third time. The sound of thunder had a lot to do with that, as she noticed whatever it was made Izuku's control slip just thinking about it. Thud blinking, and Ko sat up at the sound and looked around. Crash startled. She shot to her feet and quickly headed to Izuku's room. If something was happening, she had to get to her son. Quickly pushing open the door, she flicked on the light. Izukan, Aryoshi cut herself off when she realized the predicament her son was in. And mom, seemingly floating in mid-air was her son, as if it was the most natural thing and he wasn't supposed to be in bed. Izuku, his concentration shot. Izuku crashed onto his bed and quickly pulled the covers over his head. I'm sleeping mom, you little villain. Inko laughed and proceeded to tackle the small lump under the sheet. Well haha. 
Izuku could manipulate the air currents around him to lift himself up Izuku age 7 Muom Izuku whined as snot dribbled down his nose, and his headache grew worse. Just a minute, Izukan, groaning in pain, he rolled onto his side instead and stared at the TV. He caught a cold, just his luck. His mom had stationed him in the living room so she could quickly get to him if anything happened. Worry ward he thought. Soup's ready. Carrying a bowl of chicken noodle soup, and co made her way to her miserable hero. Please be careful, it's hot she warned. Grumbling, he slowly sat up and watched her place the bowl on the coffee table. There was an itch in his nose. Fa ha and choo. Briefly he felt his entire body tingle. And then there was the smell of smoke. Opening his eyes, Izuku was a little stumped to find the coffee table completely destroyed along with his soup. He was brought out of his thoughts when his mother appeared with a fire extinguisher and sprayed it along the couch getting him with it also. Ak mom, he cried out. Didn't you feel that Izukan? His mother asked him incredulously. Tilting his head, he stared up at her felt what? You were on fire. Spluttering he looked down at himself and realized they were scorch marks all over his shirt and a few holes. H. How? Izuku. She stared at her son in wonder, then pointed to the wall which was covered in a big scorch mark. You just shot electricity from your body eh? And you didn't even feel it when you were on fire. Stepping forward, she placed her hand on his forehead. Come to think of it, your temperature feels normal. But you have a cold Izuku blinked and realized a few things then. Izuku could generate his own electricity. And he also wasn't affected by the temperature Izuku age 10 Izuku stood in the open clearing, breathing deeply. He was out alone, not wanting his mom or anyone else to see him right now. He just needed to concentrate, slowly releasing his breath. He closed his eyes as a breeze blew by him circling his entire body before ruffling his hair. What was once a clear sky slowly began to darken around the area he was in. Could he thought concentrate? Only around this area soon there was dark clouds covering the area. And all too soon a heavy rainfall broke through and slowly the clearing he was in began to fill up. Not losing his concentration, he walked out of it as the downpour slowly but surely began to fill the clearing which was once a pond. There had been a recent drought, and the pond dried up. But Izuku being Izuku, couldn't ignore it. For the first time ever, he had purposely created a localized rainstorm. He was getting stronger with his quirk. Izuku learned to create localized weather events. Maybe soon he'll learn to create others. Izuku age 12 you know this is going to be uncomfortable, right mom? Izuku asked as he looked up from fixing red sneakers. Sighing, Inko grabbed her keys. Maybe, but we were invited to dinner, and we are going Izukun. Izuku grimaced, I'll go if you stop calling me that never. Besides you have no say in it, you're already going 20 minutes later. Gathered around one table were the Midorias and Bakugos. The atmosphere a little tense between them even as the two mothers happily chatted to each other. Izuku was seated blatantly obvious beside a scowling Katsuki. And the two haven't spoken a word to each other since the dinner started. Oi, you little shit Auntie Mitsuki growled. Get up off your ass and go do the dishes ha huh? Katsuki bristled. Why the foo he was cut off as Mitsuki reached over and smacked him upside the head. Language brat. Grumbling under his breath, Katsuki got up and began collecting the empty dishes, pausing only briefly at Izuku's before he snatched it up and stomped off. Izukan, go help Katsuki in the kitchen h huh? But wh please said in ko giving him a tight smile. Not a second spared, as he was already making his way into the kitchen. I don't know who's scarier sometimes. Auntie or my mom walking and he noticed Katsuki had his back to him, most likely already aware of his presence. Sighing, he made his way over and stood beside the blonde, wordlessly taking the wet dishes and drying them before putting them away. They continued like that until Katsuki decided to break the silence. You could at least fucking talk to me Deku he growled out. Pausing, Izuku stared at the plate in his hand before replying. It's Midoriya. I've told you that multiple times Bakugo he replied and felt more than saw Katsuki stiffen beside him. And why would I want to talk to you? This was the first time in a while they were actually alone together, and slowly becoming one of their longest conversation. Glaring at the smaller boy beside him, Katsuki grit his teeth well for one, Izuku. You're in my home helping me do the dishes that got a reaction out of him as he whipped around to glare at the blonde don't you dare call me that it is your fkukin name isn't it? Midoriya actually growled a bit at him, and Katsuki was a bit surprised but more so pleased. This was the first time he'd really gotten a reaction out of the boy. At school he would continually give him the cold shoulder and short replies if he had to. Problem? He asked, smirking. And maybe he was pushing it but he honestly didn't care. He missed this. Damn it, he missed the nerd. What do you want, Bakugo? Izuku asked tiredly. Katsuki frowned at that. Are you really still mad at me? It was years. No Izuku said cutting him off. I'm not mad at you then but did you ever think to apologize? That left him stumped. He hadn't apologized. Even after all this time he knew what he did. He knew he was wrong, but he still couldn't apologize. He tried. Honestly he did but nothing ever happened. He just couldn't. His hands still dipped in soapy water. He stared at Izuku wordlessly. 
Yeah, I really didn't think so Izuku answered turning away, done with the conversation. Deku I said it's Midoriya he replied in an icy tone. And as if to accompany his tone the room's temperature drastically dropped and he found his hands frozen in the once soapy water. The fuck, Katsuki, did you fuck with the heater again? Mitsuki yelled from the other room, shivering in her seat. I'll go take a look and see dear Masaru sighed and got to his feet. And Ko sent a worried glance to the other room, where the two boys were. Izuku stared in surprise at the state the blonde was in, and then slowly looked up to meet his eyes. I'm sorry, he said lamely before turning away and leaving the room. He could hear the blonde muttering curses under his breath when he left, and slowly the temperature returned to normal. It was five minutes later Katsuki returned to the table shivering slightly. Like before, not a word was said between them. Izuku learned he can induce freezing temperatures and possibly flash freeze objects. He would have to practice that later on. Izuku age 14 The fateful day Izuku grumbled to himself as he made his way home. He knew Katsuki was just trying to get a reaction from him. Ever since that dinner the blonde had been relentless. Yet still, he hadn't apologized or stopped calling him Deku. Did he look like an idiot? Did Katsuki think he could fix things by staying the exact same? Izuku growled to himself as he remembered the boy's words from earlier today in class. Ha, huh? Deku and I are the only who are gonna get into Yua from this shitty school. The rest of you are just fucking stepping stones. The class fell into an uproar at the blonde's words. He only smirked at them all, and looked over Izuku's way to gauge his reaction. His smirk immediately dropped when he noticed the other just gazing out the window, not phased by his words in the slightest. Scowling, he turned away and faced front. Why was the nerd being so fucking difficult? Stomping his feet a bit petulantly, Izuku stopped under the tunnel and glared at nothing. Stupid dumb idiotic ignorant Bakugo. Stomping his feet at every insult hurled Bakugo's way, Izuku didn't notice the manhole cover behind him shifting. He didn't notice the new presence behind him. He didn't notice any of it until it was too late. The slight shift in the breeze was his only warning. And as he whipped around he was assaulted by a wave of sludge trying to force its way down his throat. Foolishly he tried to scream, but it only allowed whatever the heck it was further down his throat. Try not to fight it kid. It'll only hurt that much worse Izuku heard the strange gurgle of a voice. But he couldn't force his eyes open. Everything was beginning to hurt. He was terrified. I didn't know that man was in town. I really screwed up this time Izuku could feel it. He was dying. The thought shook him at his core. He could feel the cold brush of death against his fingertips. His emotions were in a whirl mind. His mind a maelstrom. What the hell? He heard the voice again, but this time it was. Panicking. Izuku felt the cold feeling intensify. This time it felt oddly comforting. He also felt the sludge leaving his system as the villain backed away from. What are you doing kid? He heard the thing screech but he didn't care. The cold felt comforting, it felt safe. Izuku gave in to it. A-A-A-H-H-H wearily. Izuku forced his open only to gasp in shock and scramble backwards. Now that he finally got a look at the thing attacking him, he saw just how big and imposing it looked. But that wasn't what baffled him. It was the frozen state of the villain in front of him and the ongoing blizzard. What the did do that? He asked looking down at his hands as if they would answer him. He defeated a villain. He protected himself. He defeated a villain on his own. All too soon Izuku was brought out of celebration as the manhole shifted again and a figure stepped through. Izuku quickly stepped back and instinctively coated his body in electricity. If whoever tried to touch him they'd be zapped mercilessly and he would be able to run away if he had to. He really wanted to just run away. Fear not. Frya why the hell is it so cold? Izuku blinked stupidly as he watched the figure. All might. Hum. Said man looked to where he heard the voice and saw the villain he was chasing frozen in front of a young middle schooler. Oh my quickly shaking away his fanboy thoughts. He quickly turned to the villain. That he would ever attacked me. I stopped him with my quirk. You should probably call it in. I don't know how to unfreeze him. All Might stared at the young boy, and then around himself as the ongoing blizzard gradually began to dissipate leaving behind a frozen tunnel and villain. That's a powerful quirk you have there young man. I'm glad you aren't hurt scratching behind his head. Izuku smiled shyly at his idol. I honestly didn't mean to do all of that. I guess I'm still figuring just what I can do lowering his hand he took quick steps toward his idol. Can I get your autograph please? I've admired you for so long. Smiling, All Might took the offered notebook and pen and signed it. This was why he loved doing what he did, inspiring the younger generation to take up after him after he leaves this world. Anything for an aspiring hero Izuku gasped softly, and looked up to his idol. You think I can be a hero like you, All Might? Looking at the boy, he smiled softly and placed a hand on the boy's head. Yes, I believe you can that day Izuku learned to summon a blizzard, and also to finally flash free someone. Maybe. It was also the day he gained another supporter in his idol. It was a couple weeks after that fateful meeting with his idol, and Izuku was still excited. He got to meet his idol, and he also believed he could make his dream a reality. 
When he had gotten home that day and told his mom about it, she nearly had a heart attack when she learned he was attacked by a villain. She spent the rest of that week doting on him every time she got. He barely made it out. Taking a deep breath, he clenched his fists. He needed to improve with his quirk some more, find ways to use it in combat. That incident with the sludge villain had been a complete fluke, and he couldn't rely on luck to get him through his battles. He needed the skills. With that determination, he strode out onto the sand of Tacoba Seaside Bay and glared at the copious amount of trash littered around as if challenging it. I will be a hero. With that declaration, he quickly got to work. First he set off to strengthen the things he can lift with his winds, lifting multiple heavy appliances at once. With that came control, and with the sweat rolling down his face he directed the current to the pile beside the garbage. He was making headway. When he wasn't at the beach he was at school, tackling his school work with equal determination. Just strength didn't make a good hero. He wouldn't be any help to anyone if he was stupid. Each day he would return to the beach and go about tackling the garbage in different ways. What didn't need to be recycled he blasted it with his electricity, working on his aim and how much power he could draw forth. One time when he had drawn upon all his strength, he had literally summoned what would definitely be classified as a lightning bolt from his fingertips. It was instantaneous, happening in a blink of an eye but somehow he was able to track its movements as it danced away from his fingertips and scorched the heaps of garbage along with the sand. He'd have to be more careful with that one. But it made him wonder if he could do the same. Only this time pull the lightning from the sky. He never tried it of course, having already seen what a blast from his fingertips already caused. No need to draw attention to himself. He'd do it somewhere more private. He did however practice more at summoning blizzards. He had gotten pretty decent at it, but the build-up was still a little slow, unlike his other instantaneous attacks. But he didn't need to rush it. With that came the ability to summon localized hailstorms. It was easy when he understood just how to manipulate the coal. He learned to control the size and density of the hail as well, and just to splurge himself a little he made it snow around himself as well. His summoning of rainstorms was faster than before, making flash floods a little easier. If he combined it with the cold, he could flash freeze things. Well, that's what he thought in theory but he hadn't actually tried it yet. It wouldn't do to have a giant block of ice out in the open and no way to melt it. Not letting it set him back, he developed a neat trick where he could induce the deafening sound of thunder just from clapping his hands together. At point-blank range, that could really be devastating. Out of all of Izuku's abilities his mastery over the wind was the most developed at the moment, alongside channeling lightning through his body. Pondering in thought, he added slight adjustments to his hero costume because of this. He'll have to work on making sure all his abilities were on par with each other. But for now he just needed to train for the entrance exams. He was aiming for the very top. All too soon ten months had flown by, and the entrance exams were before him. Just one more day. He had impressively cleared up the beach in that time span, and the view was worth it. He'll have to take his mom here sometime, and tell her what he'd been up to and why he was little more lean than before. His size wasn't impressive or exaggerated, but it was well enough to turn a few heads however. That and his new haircut, he had taken to shaving the sides of his hair, letting his curls hang down. His mom had gushed at him for how cute he looked and immediately braided some of his hair into one long braid that hung off the side of his head. He wasn't one to think about his looks, but he guess he did look kind of cute with it. And so came the day of the exam staring up at the imposing-looking school, Izuku gulped nervously. His mom had wanted to see him off, so he was pleasantly distracted with her presence. But now she was gone, and he was alone. His nerves were a bit shot. That was probably why when he took his first step he tripped over his own feet. His nerves were even affecting his balance. Stealing his nerves, he quickly drew forth the wind around himself and spun lightly, his feet leaving the ground momentarily before landing and regaining his composure. Whoa, then quickly lost it as he flinched away from the sudden voice behind him. Peeking over his shoulder, Izuku was greeted by the sight of a cute girl. She had short brown hair and a bob cut and dusty pink cheeks. Her eyes were big and round and she had a heart-shaped face. She probably got a lot of attention. I saw what you did, it was so cool. She gushed. He only nodded slowly, not sure just what he was supposed to say. The girl however wasn't bothered by his lack of words. I would have been some bad luck if you had tripped right before the exams she smiled, and then began walking ahead of him waving at him. I hope you do well. Blinking, he smiled slowly. Why you too? He shouted after her. He wasn't too sure if she heard him, but that wasn't important. He had an exam to pass. Deku he looked over his shoulder at the voice. Back Hugo he didn't bother correcting him this time. It'll just lead to another fight. Katsuki nodded slowly, regarding him. Good luck was all he said before walking past him. Izuku stared after him, watching him walk ahead. You two Katsuki twitched, but didn't respond. After that Izuku made his way inside as well, and surprise, he found himself seated beside Katsuki. The two ignored each other and instead focused their attention on the pro hero present Mike as he explained how the entrance exam works. 
They were going to take a practical exam first, and go up against robot villains then do the written exam. Was that wise though? What if students were too tired from the practical exam and couldn't focus on the written exam? Maybe it was some form of test. The goal of the first exam was to dispatch as much of the faux villains as you could. It was a point-ranked test. Your incessant muttering is distracting. A loud voice boomed, startling Izuku out of his thoughts. As sorry, he squeaked covering his mouth. He always had a bad habit of zoning out and muttering up a storm. It's none of your business what he does anyway Katsuki growled. Izuku decided to tune out the two males from then on, and instead focused on ways to get as much points as possible. Soon he found himself outside with the other participants. They had been grouped off, and Izuku was eternally grateful not to be in Katsuki's group. Looking around he saw the girl from the entrance wringing her hands nervously, so he made to walk over to her and maybe share some encouraging words. He didn't get the chance as the bespectacled boy from earlier cut him off. She's obviously already very nervous. It will do you good not to make it worse for her Izuku felt his eye twitch at that, but held his tongue. This wasn't the place for an argument. He sent one last look towards the girl then turned away and walked to the front. Everyone around him muttered to themselves thinking he looked plain, and he probably wouldn't pass. They probably thought they were being silent enough, but their voices traveled on the wind and the wind was his ally. It's time he showed them the fruits of his training. Suddenly the doors shot open, and before anyone could get their bearings Izuku had pulled up a sudden gust of wind that propelled him forward and ahead of the others as they stared at him dazed before quickly racing forward as well. Channeling that familiar current through his body, Izuku zipped through the herd of villains and stopped just behind them. Turning himself in midair he faced them and brought his hands down and multiple blasts of lightning struck the robots gathered around him immediately taking them all out. He'd successfully summoned lightning, multiple lightning bolts in fact. He had been practicing. He could do this. Nobody noticed the dark clouds above them as they disappeared as soon as they came. Still in midair he sensed all the air currents around him and a little wobbly he began to ride along it. This was the end product of his mastery over the wind. He could sense and ride air currents. It was like he was flying, and nothing felt better than the wind rushing through his hair. He covered a lot of ground this way, making it much easier to rack up points. He was doing great. He let a smile slip onto his face feeling a little euphoric. He was going to pass. The smile dropped when the buildings around him shook. He frowned when he noticed the participants running in the opposite direction. He stiffened when the air shifted ahead of him, and the looming presence of the zero pointer was revealed. Concentration shot. He landed flat on his butt as the others ran past him. This is crazy. He made to get up and run off as well, but then someone's voice reached his ears. Someone calling for help. Whirling around, he saw the girl from earlier had her legs trapped under some debris and the zero pointer was getting wickedly close to crushing her. Why wasn't anyone helping her? She cried out again. And just like that he was racing towards her, the clouds already forming and darkening above him. One shot his mind raced. That's all I got, but all I need. At the sound of him approaching, the girl looked up and gasped. Raising his hand towards the sky he stopped suddenly, and angled his body like he was about to throw a spear. Hemulam. He threw his hand out with all his might, the force lurching his whole body forward and off the ground. K-R-A-K-O-O-M. As soon as it came, it was gone and only left the results of his presence. A gaping hole was made in the zero-pointer's chest, its form crackling with residual electrical energy. The participants gaped in astonishment. The observers stared in wonder. That was the largest lightning bolt they had ever witnessed. Izuku for his part passed out right after. He'd never drawn on that much power before. He'd never been that desperate. But he had to save her. Around him the others whispered about him in amazement, wondering if he wanted to look normal so he wouldn't stand out. Tenya Ida stared at the boy curiously. And in awe, a week later sitting at the table, and Ko and Izuku wordlessly ate their dinner together. A whole week had gone by and he hadn't heard anything from Yua he wondered if he blew his chances by attacking the Zero Pointer. There are no points to get from defeating it. Maybe it was a ploy for participants to unknowingly sacrifice their points by attacking such a thing and failing. Was Yua that harsh? Izuku wailed in mortification. Did he just cause his own failure? Inko looked at her son worriedly. He had to save that girl though, she would have been crushed. Or, maybe not. They were monitoring us, so they would have stopped it before something like that happened, wouldn't they? Izuku groaned and got up from the table. Izukun, thanks for the dinner mom. I'm gonna go to bed early tonight. Inko watched him leave, not knowing the words to say to him to make him feel better. Just what was Yua doing to her son? Inside his room, Izuku slumped in his chair by his desk. He slowly stared at all the posters of All Might littered across his wall. He felt like crying. He was pulled out of his thoughts by his mother slamming open his door, an envelope clenched in her hands. Izuku, M mom. This just came for you. She thrust the envelope towards him and he slowly accepted it, looking down at it warily. Open it Izuku he swallowed and nodded his head before carefully opening the envelope. 
Inside was a letter and a small disc that clattered onto his desk before blaring to life with a recording of All Might. He passed. Slowly he turned to his mother. Heart in his throat I passed. He whispered. His mother was already crying. You passed Izukan. He began to laugh and cry together with his mom. He passed. Looking back towards the screen, he searched for the points in his name. He, oh, you tied with Katsuki-kun. His mother voiced. Well, that was a little unexpected. Good luck on your first day, Izukun. Smiling, Izuku nodded his head and gave his mother a quick hug before running up. He was actually going to his dream school. His goal was within reach. It all felt so surreal. With those thoughts and a permanent smile etched on his face, Izuku made his journey to his new school. Upon his arrival, he hesitantly stared up at the huge doors. Yura really goes all out for its students. Taking a deep breath, he reached for the door handle and sent a quick prayer to whoever was listening. Please, don't let Bakugo or that other guy be in the same hero class. Pulling it open, his hopes were immediately dashed as said boys were currently arguing. Sighing, he walked inside and the bespectacled boy instantly noticed his presence. It was almost as if he was looking out for him. Bowing deeply at the waist, it had turned to Izuku I deeply apologize for my rash behavior during the exams. It would seem you were the only one keen enough to uncover the true objective of the test. Spluttering, Izuku took a shaky step back. Uh, um, aye aye, he stammered. Oh, it's you. Turning to the voice, Izuku recognized the cheery girl from the exam. Ah, uh, I remember you smiling brightly she walked up to the pair. I would hope so. You saved me flushing slightly. Izuku nervously rubbed the back of his head. I couldn't just leave you there. Blinking, Yuraka stared at him before squealing and bouncing around in front of them. You're so cool. By now his face was a vibrant shade of red, and he had both of his hands wrapped around his head in a basic Izuku way. Away from them, Katsuki glared at the trio. I'm Achako Yuraka she beamed. I Izuku Midoriya. I am Tenya Ida he piped up, not one to be excluded. Suddenly there was a loud bang as the door flew open but no one entered. The class fell into silence at the oddity. If you're here to make friends, then you're wasting my time a tired voice drawled and the students made their way over to the door to see a caterpillar-like thing. This is a hero class, and with that said I'm your homeroom teacher. Aizawa showed a following his words. He unzipped his sleeping bag revealing his eternally tired face. Pulling out a juice box, he lazily sipped it before continuing. I suggest you get change into these now he drawled as he emerges from his nest and hands out PE uniforms. Gathered outside on the PE field, the class of a one nervously chatted between themselves. Sighing, Aizawa slouches and regards them before speaking. Since you it gives their teachers free reign, I'm having you all participate in a quirk apprehension test at that. The class immediately quieted and focused their attention on him. Since you wouldn't be able to do this at your previous schools, I'm doing it now to measure your quirks pulling forth a ball. He lazily throws it to Katsuki who easily catches it. You, throw that using your quirk not needing any other explanations. Katsuki walked forward. I don't care what you do. All I expect you to do is not cross that line Aizawa spoke up. Die. An explosion rang out as the ball rocketed through the sky from Katsuki's throw. Nodding his head, Aizawa held up the monitor. 705. Two meters murmurs of excitement quickly followed as the class began to get pumped for the possibility of using their quirks in such a way. Make no mistake, this is a test, and whoever ranks last in total points will be deemed hopeless and immediately expelled the reactions were immediate. HHH, but that's not fair. Stealing his gaze, he replied. The world is unfair his response causes them to quiet down again. It's a hero's job to combat that unfairness. So I suggest you use your quirks wisely for some reason. Aizawa glanced at Izuku when he said this. The first test was a 50-meter dash. The goal was to use their quirks to improve their mobility. When Izuku's turn came around, he was placed to run with Katsuki making him wonder if someone was riding his life and just really liked torturing him. Shaking away the thoughts, he focused ahead of him and ignored the sound of small explosions to his left. It wasn't exactly a race, but still Izuku wanted to win. So when the whistle was blown, Izuku quickly shot off like a bullet with two small tornadoes at his feet acting as propellers. He didn't dare look to the blonde, afraid he'd be distracted and lose. It wasn't long till he crossed the finish line and skidded to a halt with dust kicking up around him. Turning around, the first thing he saw was Katsuki glaring heated daggers at him and he knew immediately from then that he had beaten the boy. The results were, Tenya Eida, 3, 4 seconds Tsuyuasui, 5, 58 seconds, Achako Yuraka, 7, 15 seconds Mashurawa Jiro, 5, 49 seconds Yuga Ayama, 5, 51 seconds Katsuki Bakugo, 4, 13 seconds Izuku Midoriya, 4, 9 seconds. Next was the grip strength test. 
Nervously, Izuku looked at his handheld device inside. His quirk wasn't exactly a physical one, but there was nothing he could do about that. Resigning to his fate, he gripped the device as hard as he could. Mizo Shoji, 540, 0 kilograms Izuku Midoriya, 56, 0 kilograms clenching his fist. Izuku promised himself to do better in the other tests. Meanwhile Aizawa regarded him coolly. The next test was the standing long jump. The goal was to clear the sandbox using their quirks, but that was fairly obvious by now. When it was his turn, Izuku quickly sprinted forward and before he reached the line he pushed his hands down and expelled a short burst of wind which flipped him into the air and right over the sandbox. Landing lightly on his feet, he looked over his shoulder and smiled. He cleared the sandbox. Katsuki Bakugo. Cleared sandbox Yuga Ayama. Cleared sandbox Izuku Midoriya. Cleared sandbox the next test was the ball throw. It was the test Aizawa had Katsuki demonstrate so everyone knew just what they had to do. Walking forward, Izuku breathed in. He knew he was doing well, there was just no way he wasn't. His confidence was blatantly obvious to any onlookers. Soon the wind gathered around him as he concentrated. Izuku didn't notice how it buffeted his classmates, even from where he stood. As he went to throw it, he suddenly felt disconnected from everything. The ball dropped and rolled at his feet, as he took shaky breaths. What was going on? I erased your quirk startled at the words. He turned to see Aizawa with his hair floating above his head and his eyes an angry red. His mind supplied him the man's name. He was the underground hero eraser head. Confidence is one thing. But overconfidence is another he began noticing how the boy's body shook lightly. I saw what your quirk did to the zero pointer, it was powerful. But that's all it was. It lacked finesse and control he paid no mind to the others around him as they whispered amongst themselves about hearing about the huge lightning bolt. Did you notice your quirk was affecting your classmates? If you continue on like this, you're going to be more of a hazard than help to anyone he finished. And watched for the boy's reaction. Izuku tried to steady his breathing. He couldn't feel anything around him. It was almost like he was blind without his quirk. He came to a startling revelation then. His quirk was another sense for him. It wasn't just power, it was more than that. Despite his panic, Izuku still managed to hear his sensei's words and with a shaky nod sent the man's way he felt his senses returning. It was instantly relieving. Turning away he focused back on the ball and pondered Aizawa's words. He had control, which he knew for sure, but he was lacking finesse. He looked to his classmates to see some of them fixing their shirts from when the wind blew them up. Was that what the man meant? His quirk being more of a hazard. He wanted anything but that to be true. From now on, Izuku promised himself to always be aware of his surroundings. Never again he thought. With his mindset, he set to work and this time instead of expelling the air around him, he drew it forth towards one single point. The others barely felt anything but a slight breeze, but Izuku could feel it all. Focusing all the wind to his palm, the ball stood rooted there as the wind gathered around it. Izuku threw his hand out and released all the gathered wind in that one point. VVWWWHHOOSSHH the ball rocketed through the air, small rings trailing behind it as it just soared further and further. It was like a sonic boom. Behind him, Aizawa grinned impressed with the kid in front of him. The class cheered. Izuku smiled. Am I still a hazard sensei? Katsuki Bakugo, 705, 2 meters Achako Yuraraka, Infinity Izuku Midoriya, 905. 1 meters after that, they had 3 more tests, a distance run, toe touch, and sit-ups. By the time they were done half the class was panting heavily. They had overexerted themselves, but they didn't regret it one bit. Aizawa watched them for a brief minute before walking forward and placing the results against the wall. As soon as he stepped back they had already gathered around trying to see their ranking. Final results Momo Yairazu. First Izuku Midoriya, second Shoto Todoroki, third Katsuki Bakugo, fourth Tenya Ida, fifth Fumikage Takoyami, sixth Mizo Shoji, seventh Mashurao Ajiro, eighth Ajiro Kirishima, ninth Mina Ashido, tenth Achako Yuraraka, eleventh Koji Koda, twelfth Rikido Sato, thirteenth Tsuyasui, fourteenth Yuga Ayama, fifteenth. Hanta Siro, 16th Denki Kaminari, 17th Kayoka Jiro, 18th Toru Hagakir, 19th Minoru Minda, 20th Noo the smallest of them wailed pitifully. Izuku gave him a sympathetic glance. If it weren't for the quirk usage, he probably would have have failed too. He wasn't the most athletic person. Deku, sighing, Izuku turned to his once childhood best friend. Bakugo Katsuki growled at that and gave him a leveled glare. Don't get too comfortable. I'm going to beat all of these fucking extras and you having said what he wanted. The blonde angrily stomped away. At his words, Izuku arched a brow. He hadn't even placed first, but for some reason the blonde singled him out despite it. He was too drawn into his thoughts to hear Aizawa explaining the threatening of expulsion was just a ruse. The first day of school ends for him. With a skip in his step, Izuku made his way toward the school gates. It was the best first day he'd ever had, despite some rocky parts. But he'd happily take it. He was one more step closer to reaching his goal. Midoriya-san, 
Blinking, he paused and turned towards the voice. Ida Khan. Smiling, the taller boy walked up to him. We got off to a rather rough start. I was hoping you'd allow me to rectify that and possibly walk with you. He'd never walk with anyone before. And although the boy had irritated him before in the exams he had apologized and was actively trying to make up for it, Izuku couldn't say no to that. Smiling, he agreed I'd like that Ida Khan hold on. Yuraraka quickly ran up to the pair. I want to walk with you guys too. She pouted. Ida nodded while Izuku rubbed at his head. His first day and he'd already made two interesting friends. By the way, Zukun, can I call you that? Why did that blonde angry guy call you Deku? Yuraraka questioned. It's a nickname right? Are you too close? His lips pulled into a small frown. He shook his head. Um, no. We're not close not anymore he answered and shrugged. Deku was a childhood insult he called me, not a nickname. I don't really like it it turned to him and did this funny gesture with his hands. So he is insulting you when he calls you that. He's a bully then why don't you stop him? Yuraka asks. I tried before. But Bakugo is too prideful to ever admit when he's wrong, so I just ignore him the two just nodded at his answer. Nobody noticed Katsuki waiting outside for Izuku, nor did they notice when he turned in the other direction away from them and stalked off. They wouldn't find out till he exploded. The next day Izuku sat in class, his notebook sprawled across the desk in front of him. They had surprisingly normal classes after that crazy first day, and while it baffled him, he was still relieved, taking a glance up ahead. Izuku arched his brow as he was greeted with the sight of the back of a familiar blonde's head. For the whole day since he arrived, Izuku felt something off about the other. And while he usually never bothered himself with the blonde's moods, he couldn't help but notice the boy had kept a distance between them. The blonde almost never left him alone. Before he could ponder the thought anymore, the door was thrown open and his idol came through in an overly dramatic way. I am entering through the door like a normal person. Izuku laughed lightly at that. All Might was All Might, walking into the room. All Might swept his gaze over the class only pausing briefly on familiar dark curls tinted green. He almost hadn't recognized the young boy he had told Nenzu about, with the new haircut and everything. He didn't want to play favorites, but he was a little happy to be teaching the boy. Today you all with be doing your very first combat training simulation the class cheered at this, prompting a smile from All Might. And of course, this wouldn't be completed without these at his words small briefcases were ejected from the walls with specific numbering. Our hero costumes, Kaminari shouted. That is right. The school had gone ahead with your costume designs and had them made early on for you he grinned as they all gushed about being able to finally wear them. Now hurry and get change Izuku looked down at his briefcase's contents. I really hope I don't look stupid walking down the corridor. Izuku nervously wrung his hands. He really didn't want to look like a dork in front of his new classmates and friends. But, he really liked his look, so they'd just have to deal with it. Right, right he thought firmly. Stepping out, he was greeted with to a sight of colors. His classmates were all in their hero costumes, and they looked awesome. Zukun, you look hot. Izuku felt his entire body flush as Yuraka bounced up to with the biggest grin. She wolf whistled at him, and he shrunk in himself. This was so embarrassing. The whole class was staring at him now. For his costume, he had gone with a full-length form-fitting bodysuit, black in color. Flaring out from behind his waist was a long black cape which to his ankles and it was also attached to his wrists as well. Some parts of his costume were colored white such as his chest area, his elbows, his gloves, and also his shoes. The costume was also high-collared, and it almost like a choker was around his neck. He looked almost regal. A redhead whistled as they made their way over. You look good man. He grinned as Izuku ducked his head. I could never go for a cape, but it totally works for you. You look super manly. He finished with a thumbs up. At the mention of the cape, some of flush cleared up and he looked down at it. It's more for practical use than anything really he mumbled. You still good the redhead answered, having heard him. I'm Kirishima by the way Izuku nodded, and smiled a small smile. I'm Midoriya. Nice to meet you Kirishima-kun the redhead boy. Now dubbed Kirishima, stared a little too longer than was necessary at the smaller boy. Right Yuraka looked between the two, and then smirked over at Kirishima. She found something interesting. His other friend Ida walked up to them then and looked Izuku up and down. It's practical, but all black. Won't you get overheated? It has whitened it Yuraka pointed out. Izuku laughed a little, and shook his head. The temperature never bothers me. No matter how cold or hot it gets cool both Yuraka and Kirishima breathe. All too soon All Might appeared before the class once more. Gathering their attention, he began to explain the exercise. Alright everyone, first of you will be all broken up into teams of 12, half heroes and half villains he explained. Those who are villains will guard a nuclear weapon, and the hero's goal is to stop their schemes. If the heroes capture the villains or retrieve the weapon you win, but if the villains manage to keep the weapon until time runs up or they capture the heroes they win he finished. 
The class nodded along, getting the gist of the exercise. Now I'll have you draw from lots and see who'll you be facing, he said stepping to the side to reveal the box. Upon his turn, Izuku stepped forward and reached in. Please don't be back Hugo he repeated the thought several times. Grabbing one of the cards, he pulls it out to see. Ijiro Kirishima. Huh. He breathed. That wasn't so bad at all. He walked over to the boy who was looking around to see if anyone had gotten his name. Kirishima-kun he called, waving to get the other's attention. I got your name. W were teammates sweet. He exclaimed. I was hoping we would. You're easy to get along with. Ah, you two after everyone had drawn, All Might spoke up once more. I will announce the matchups now he said and gestured to the screen. Izuku felt himself stiffen when his name came up. Of all the hero team, Ijiro Kirishima and Izuku Midoriya vs. Villains, Katsuki Bakugo and Achako Yuraraka not only was he going up against Bakugo, he was up against a friend as well. He surely knew for sure now someone out there hated him. Izuku watched alongside Kirishima as the villains were led inside to prepare for them. Sighing, he turned to the other boy. Plan? He blinked. He was going to ask him if he had one, but it seemed Kirishima was willing to go along with any idea he came up with. Ah uh, yeah, actually I do sweet dude. I'm all ears as he explained the plan to the redhead. Izuku found himself thinking he really liked his classmate. The boy was. Nice. Maybe afterwards. We could be friends they explained both their quirks to each other. Izuku already thinking of ways to combine them. Soon their time was up and they were making their way inside the building. Making their way down a corridor. They kept their eyes peeled for anything. If he was right then. Izuku felt it before the attacker even made his appearance, and with quick steps he grabbed Kirishima's hand and pulled him back just before an angry jumped around the corner and blasted at the spot he once was. Whoa. Having been a little too close, the explosion pushed both him and his teammate to the floor. Izuku wheezed as Kirishima landed awkwardly on top of him. The boy was heavy even without his quirk active, he noted. As sorry, Kirishima said, scrambling off the smaller boy and helping him back up. They both turned to raging the blonde. You were right Midoriya. Bakugo did come after us Katsuki growled at that. And then his gaze settled on Midoriya. Fight me. Izuku saw it coming. He had created their plan with it in mind, but it still surprised him. He glanced at his teammate, and Kirishima nodded before breaking away from him and running down another corridor. Good luck. Midoriya he whispered into their calm link. Izuku nodded then shifted his focus on the threat in front of him. Come at me then. Bakugo Katsuki bristled at that, and he exploded. Stop F-U-C-K-I-N-C-A-L-O-I and me that. D-E-K-U. With a lunge, he hurled himself at Izuku, his palms heating up. Following the current's movements, Izuku predicted the other's movements and coated his body in electricity in anticipation. Katsuki realized too late what was happening as Izuku avoided his left arm and jumped before spinning and kicking him in his side into the wall. The kick itself didn't hold much power, but it was the electricity coursing through it that really had Katsuki hissing in pain. Izuku knew he couldn't outmatch the other physically, but with each head he could hopefully connect Katsuki will feel the shock from his electricity. I'm not a Deku anymore Bakugo, he yelled. I never was, and I'm gonna be a hero. Katsuki snapped. I told you to stop fucking calling me that. Izuku felt his blood run cold at the blonde's words. The air shifted around them. Deku, the blonde bellowed, and Izuku flinched back at the other's volume. It was like the blonde was roaring at him and Izuku felt fear race down his spine for the first time ever from being near Katsuki. With a lunge, Katsuki aimed a kick at Izuku's head. Stop calling me that, you fucking nerd. Izuku found it surprisingly easy to catch the other's leg, despite the fear clinging to his senses. The blonde was unhinged, his attacks were predictable, and Izuku didn't know how to feel about that. Katsuki was all rage. That's your name isn't it? So why did he find himself answering back? Running on pure instincts, Izuku sent currents of electricity throughout the blonde's leg making him hiss in pain, but not allowing to be deterred in the slightest from the pain. The blonde swept his arm in a wide arc sending a wave of explosions to Izuku's face and sending him hurtling down the corridor. I'm fucking Kakin. Coughing, Izuku pushed up on his arms and glared at the blonde. We haven't been friends since preschool. Why would I call you that? Midoriya. He heard the voice of his teammate calling out to him worriedly, but in his state all he could focus on was the raging blonde in front of him. Slowly he pushed to his feet, wiping half-heartedly at the scratches on his face. You haven't been my friend, but I fucking never stopped being yours. Any other time Izuku would have froze at the words, and then talked to the other calmly. However this wasn't one of those times. Who the hell calls their friend useless, Katsuki? He screamed at the blonde. The blonde stilled at his words. Slowly he raised his arm and positioned his left gauntlet at Izuku. Is that why you didn't want me to call you Deku anymore? He asked, but he wasn't really looking for an answer. You think I would think of you as a friend or a rival if I thought you were fucking useless? His words shook Izuku, and he found himself taking a step back. You think I would be so fucking bothered by you telling your stupid ass friends you were just ignoring me all this time if I thought so fucking little of you? 
At the end of it, Izuku found himself trembling. I call you Deku because it's the only fucking proof we were childhood friends. Why you heard that? Izuku found himself asking despite all the word vomit the blonde just dropped. Huh, of course I fucking did. Cause like an idiot I thought we could walk home together. He raged, letting everything out. And I could've fucking apologized and maybe fix things again. Izuku twitched at that and lowered his head. What's stopping you from doing it now? Katsuki scowled and placed his hand around one of the pins on his gauntlet. I'm going to fucking blow you up first, beat your ass, then maybe apologize fucking afterwards you stupid nerd raising his fist. He met the blonde's gaze steadily. He didn't come this far to lose. Bring it on then, Kakin scowling. Because Katsuki never smiled, he explained about his gauntlets to the other and blatantly ignored All Might's warnings. Fucking nerd insufferable idiot and he pulled. And Izuku clapped. K-K-K-R-A-A-A-B-O-O-O-M-M-M. The sound of a thunderclap and an explosion meeting head-on rang out destroying the entire corridor the boys were in and shaking the entire building as well. Luckily, it didn't collapse on itself and bury the teens inside. Shit All Might swore under his breath. As the dust cleared up, two silhouettes became visible. Panting heavily, the two boys glared at each other. Due to the explosion they had fallen two stories down and were now on the ground floor. Izuku coughed and stumbled on his feet. Midoriya, are you alright? At the worried tone, Izuku blinked and finally remembered his teammate. The whole building shook. Was that you and Bakugo? Why aren't you answering dude? Midoriya. Shakily he raised his arms and touched the calm in his ear. I'm F fine Kirishima kun he answered and there was a sigh of relief. I may have gotten a bit carried away. Are you oh okay? Uh, I'm fine he answered. Actually I'm better than fine, I'm great. Izuku could feel the grin from where he was standing. Midoriya, we won. At this, Izuku blinked and sure enough All Might's voice rang out. Hero team wins. Well, how did that happen? He must have said it out loud because Kirishima was already answering him. Well, it was really hard dealing with your Araka alone and when you hadn't shown up I figured the plan must have went awry he explained and Izuku sunk to his knees as the redhead's words brought him back down to reality. So when that explosion shook the building, I took a chance while your Araka was distracted and grabbed the weapon. It wasn't very manly, but it paid off he laughed and Izuku found himself laughing along with him. I'm so glad he whispered. He had forgotten all about the exercise. He was just glad that he hadn't managed to harm his friends due to him and Bakugo clashing. Speaking of the blonde, Izuku took a glance across the room. Paku he stopped when he noticed the angry tick marks on the blonde's forehead and his veins bulging. You um, I fucking lost. He screeched. Izuku sweat dropped. Izuku he met the blonde's gaze. I'm fucking sorry smiling. Izuku titled his head and scratched at his head. Call me Deku. Kakin said boy twitched and angrily stomped off. I was going to even if you didn't fucking tell me to nerd. Izuku found himself laughing as the blonde retreated elsewhere. They weren't best friends again. That was obvious. But maybe in time they would be. Maybe back in the viewing room after him and Kirishima had caught back up with each other. They found themselves back with their classmates as All Might gave them their evaluation. Despite the odds you all did well All Might said to Kirishima and Yuraraka, while Bakugo and Izuku stood side by side looking put out. They had been properly chastised by All Might and Yeirazu on how they had battled using their quirks in such a way. That is why I believe you two are the MVPs of this battle trial. At this Yuraraka squealed, and Kirishima smiled a bashful smile before rubbing at his head. You deserve it Kirishima kun Izuku spoke up from behind the boy. You were awesome, as super manly he said, trying to compliment the boy and flushing furiously. You think so? The redhead breezed, then grinned when Izuku nodded. Thanks bro. And without any prompting he draped an arm around Izuku's shoulder and pulled him closer. Bro hug. Izuku spluttered. Kirishima flushed a little. Katsuki rolled his eyes. After that they all gathered around to watch as the others completed their trials. Well, Izuku and Kirishima did. Bakugo stood up to the side and grumbled to himself. More often than not, Izuku began muttering to himself and writing down everything he could about the new quirks he was seeing and how best they would match up with him. It's a high possibly he'd probably have to team up with some of them for assignments. So Izuku was already formulating ways to combine their quirks. Boy, Midori Kirishima nudged them boy lightly, drawing him out of his thoughts. Did you also come up with combination attacks for you and I? He asked. He really wouldn't mind working with the other more often. He was just so manly. Huh, that doesn't sound like the right to word to describe him he found himself thinking. Of course Izuku's eye brightened. I thought of a lot of ways our quirks can complement each other really. Your quirk is really cool, Kirishima-kun. We'd be awesome together. Kirishima found himself flushing at the innocent words. All right. Nodding. Izuku turned back towards the screen as the next trial was beginning. He had no idea of what he had done to the poor redhead beside him. He was too focused on the boy who had his entire left side frozen in ice. That was an odd hero costume. What was the reason behind it? 
Just like the rest of the class, Izuku watched in awe at the incredible display of the boy's quirk as he single-handedly froze the entire building and the villains all in an instant. As quickly as it had began, it was already over. His hands clenched around his notebook. They were some really strong people in his class, but he should have expected it. This was the hero class after all. For some reason, Izuku felt really small all of a sudden. He wanted to get better. He wanted to be strong like that as well. He was going to get stronger. Later that day after classes were over, Izuku walked along to the gate surprisingly alone. He was so into his thoughts he didn't notice the person in front of him and ended up walking right into him. Boomph. Well, he felt a pair of arms grabbing onto his shoulders and steadying him before he fell. You alright dude? At the voice, Izuku opened his eyes which had shut after he had crashed into the person. K. Kirishima-kun. Smiling that toothy grin, the boy pulled him closer and draped an arm across his shoulders. Yep, I was waiting on you. Let's walk together, yeah. Oi, I'm fucking here too you shitty haired bastard a familiar voice growled out. Haha, I forgot. Looking past the redhead, Izuku found Katsuki standing there with his hands shoved in his pockets and a scowl etched on his face. Kaken. He felt his friend twitch against him, and Katsuki smirked. Nerd. We're walking home together h ha. Huh? Izuku stammered. Kirishima looked between the two and frowned. Say Midoriya, back in the trials you weren't calling him that name. Did something change? It's none of your fucking business, shitty hair Katsuki growled. Kirishima met his glare. Dude, I don't want any trouble but Midoriya is a friend. I'll make it my business if I have to and make sure you don't trouble him Katsuki bristled, and smoke rose from his palms. Ha Kirishima felt his skin hardening in response. Under Kirishima's arm was a spluttering mess that was once known as Izuku. H hold on you guys. Kirishima shifted his gaze from the blonde and down to his friend, Midoriya. Izuku quickly shook his head, hoping to defuse the tense situation. It's not what you think Kirishima-kun. Kaken isn't going to do anything to me Katsuki relaxed only slightly. TCH Kirishima however frowned and furrowed his brows. Why do you call him Kaken? Blinking at the question, Izuku looked up at his friend. Ah, it's a childhood nickname. It's a really long story nodding along, he spared the blonde a glance. So you're just childhood friends? And if we aren't? Katsuki asked with a smirk. Kirishima wanted to punch the other boy. We're friends Izuku said. Just friends it sounded like he was saying it more to himself than the other two. Kirishima repeated the words in his head, and Katsuki rolled his eyes. You two are fucking idiots he scoffed. Can we go now? Izuku perked up at that and nudged the redhead beside him. You don't mind right? Ami rubbed at his chin with his other hand and shrugged one shoulder. Sure bro, Bakugo can walk with us. What the okay? Izuku smiled and walked ahead, leaving from under the redhead's arm. Just his second day and he was making more friends, and fixing past friendships too. It couldn't get any better than this. Unbeknownst to him however, the boys behind him glared heatedly at each other as they walked away from the school. Unaware that just around the corner was an end to their peaceful times at Ue Izuku slumped on his desk. He had gotten up at some god-awful just to make it to school early. Actually, he was forced awake by a particular blonde banging on their apartment door and screaming at him to wake the fuck up. Sighing to himself, he shot a tired glare at the blonde in front of him and all he got was a scoff in response. While it was not so bad the blonde was actively trying to be friends again. He didn't entirely want to be woken up before he deemed it was necessary. Soon their homeroom teacher made his appearance, and not missing a beat he immediately announces that they're going to be picking their class representative. Again, it's such a normal thing that it completely throws Izuku. The entire class erupted into an uproar at the declaration. They all wanted the position. It was the perfect opportunity for them to gain extra recognition. A small part of him wanted the part as well, but a larger part of him detested the idea of being in the spotlight. It was a weird feeling, because he wanted to be a hero but he didn't want all the recognition that came with it. He just wanted to save people honestly. In the end his friend Ida suggested they all take a vote. He probably expected a different outcome, and truly, so did Izuku. Just how again did he become class representative? I voted for you bro. His friend Kirishima cheered. So did I. Iraraka piped in, as did I. Ida begrudgingly admitted. He was probably regretting it, and Izuku really couldn't blame him. Fortunately his deputy representative happened to be Yairazu, so he was grateful for that. He could counter if anything. Flushing slightly, he bowed at the waist in front of the class. I'll do my best. Later as lunch rolled around, Izuku found himself seated between Katsuki and Kirishima while Ida and Yuraka took the seats in front of him. It was a mixture of completely different personalities all gathered in one spot. Doom was inevitable. The fuck, round face. I told ya I ain't got any beef with the nerd, so stop fucking pouting at me this only made her glare harder. Ada tried to placate them of course, but his words fell on deaf ears. Please, this is hardly appropriate. Kirishima paid them no mind whatsoever. Boy, Midoriya you wanna share some of that? It looks good. In response he wrapped his arms around his katsudan, 
and glared a little at the redhead. Sweat rolling down the side of his face, Kirishima raised both his hands. Forget I asked bro. Izuku's expression lightened and he went back to enjoying his lunch. He had noticed the tension in the group, but he couldn't be bothered to deal with it. Not when he had a perfectly good bowl of katsudan to enjoy. Soon the tense atmosphere did a whole 180 as the topic of heroes was brought up. Ada practically gushed about his older brother. The pro hero in Genium and Yuraraka excitedly told them she really admired the rescue hero 13. Hiroshima told them he really looked up to the past pro hero Red Riot and Katsuki and said he didn't have any since they were all stepping stones anyways. Izuku of course told them all about All Might and how he wanted to be just like his idol and save everyone with a smile. Hiroshima gave him an odd look at that, while Ida told him it was a splendid goal to go after. Their excited chatter was cut short as the school alarms abruptly went off. Someone in the cafeteria pointed out this meant that someone had infiltrated you. It only caused mass panic as everyone tried to evacuate all at once. Izuku found himself separated from his friends, as he was pushed and shoved outside into a corridor. H hey, please calm down. No one paid him any attention, all too preoccupied with getting out. He was about to try again when a shadow flew over his head, and a loud bang drew his attention to the front. Everyone, Ada Kun, please, calm yourselves, he shouted. There is no need to panic, for it is only the media that has managed to get the gates. We are U.S. students. Let us behave as such. At his words, murmurs were heard throughout the crowd as they all calmed down and returned to whatever they were doing prior. Izuku smiled to himself, coming to an easy decision. Later on, when they were all gathered in their class once again, Izuku made his way to the front. I just want to say thank you again for voting for me to be your class representative he began, and prodded at his cheek with a finger. But, I'm gonna have to resign EHHH. Bro, why? Zukan, are you sure? Taking a deep breath, he plowed on. I've made my decision. And so I'm nominating Ada Kun as class representative instead smiling to himself he glanced to his shoes. I was really moved by his actions earlier at lunch. And by the way he effortlessly grabbed everyone's attention and calmed us down. T that's why I believe Ida Kun will be the perfect representative Ida smiled at his fellow friend's words. And the class cheered for him. I happily accept. Thank you Midoriya Izuku gave him a big smile in response. Beside him Yeyarazu sighed and mumbled to herself. What about me? You're all prolonging this. Shut up Aizawa tired voice grumbled. After that was over, they settled in once more. Then Aizawa got up once again and sluggishly turned to them. Class representative, get everyone changed and lined up outside and with that, he made his way out and left the class. Springing upright, Ida did as told. And with these funny hand gestures, he had everyone changed and lined up outside in front of their school bus. Soon they were all piling in, messing up Ida's orderly line and arranging themselves how they pleased in the seats. Hiroshima's happily snags a seat beside Izuku and relaxes. As the bus drove off, they all started talking about each other's quirks. Um, actually my quirk isn't all that flashy. I probably won't be that popular of a hero Kirishima says. Izuku nudges him to get his attention. I think your quirk is powerful enough to make you into a great future hero flushing slightly at the praise. He rubs at his head. Haha, thanks bro. But still, you, Todoroki. And Bakugo's quirks are all perfect for becoming professionals. It's Izuku's turn to flush now as he twiddles his thumbs. T thanks Kirishima Kunhima voice beside him spoke up. It was Asui. I think Bakugo is always too angry to become popular though. Kiro the hell did you say? See, Izuku snickered, and Bakugo sent a glare his way. Ah, uh, you're right. Another student spoke up. Another blonde named Kaminari. Bakugo's personality is steeped in garbage. It could use a lot of work, huh? They all laughed. All too soon they arrived at a large training facility. And as they got off the bus they were greeted by the rescue hero 13. Iraraka squealed. The hero led them inside the facility, giving us all a rundown on what it's for and the different areas stimulate different disasters. I know you students probably think beating the villain is the most important thing, but you're wrong she said, turning to face us. Protecting and saving the citizens should always be your top priority her words leave the students in a state of awe. And Izuku can see why his friend looks up to the hero, but then he feels it. It was subtle, so subtle he would have missed it if he wasn't so in tone with the elements. The air shifted. And through a large portal, herds of villains leisurely made their way into the facility. Is is this a part of the training? One of the students questions. Izuku watches as their homeroom teacher pulls down his makeshift scarf and places strange goggles upon his face. Thirteen evacuate the students and contact the others. Quickly she nods and call for the students' attention. Izuku ignores this and steps forward. Because his sensei was about to engage in a battle he surely couldn't win. There's too many of them Aizawa sensei. Looking over his shoulder, Aizawa's expression lightens. Have a little more faith in your teacher, Midoriya and with that he leaps down into the fray, his capture weapon gripped in his hand and engages the enemy. Izuku watches as the man erases the villain's quirks and quickly takes them out. 
Maybe he had been wrong to worry. Aizawa-sensei looked like he knew what was doing. Still, behind him, his classmates cried out in surprise and Izuku whirled around to see a mass of black mist blocking their path. I'm sorry, but we can't allow you to leave to call for help the disgruntled voice carries over all of them. Villain, 13 exclaimed, and activated her quirk. The effect was instantaneous as it began drawing in the black mist. It was ruined however when two students charged at the mass. Die. Izuku watched as both Katsuki and Kirishima jumped at the villain, only for their attacks to pass through him harmlessly. Physical attacks were useless it seemed. Boys, at their intervention 13 quickly stopped her attack, afraid of getting them caught in it as well, and that gave the mist a perfect chance, quicker than they could follow. The mass moved and 13's cry of pain made them freeze. In one quick motion, the villain had taken down the hero and their protection. My name is Kurajiri, member of the League of Villains, and we're here to kill All Might as soon as the words were said. Izuku found the blast mass at his feet and felt himself sinking. Midoriya. Looking up, he found some of his classmates in similar states. Before he could fall all the way through, he locked eyes with a terrified pair of red eyes, and then he was gone. First thing he realized is that his movements felt heavy. Opening his eyes, he startles upon noticing he's in water and flails about uselessly. Izuku freezes when he notices a form cutting through water and heading straight for him. He panics when he notices it's a villain, and begins flailing all over again. You're mine. The shark-like man screeched. Before he could make contact with Izuku however, he's slammed into by a pair of webbed feet and sent careening away. Or not, he wails. His savior, Asui, wraps a long pink tongue around his waist and pulls him along to the surface where she safely places him upon a small yacht. He hears a thud beside him as something is dumped harshly, and he looks up to see Minder rubbing his head. Asui soon joins them, and they all breathe a sigh of relief to be around familiar faces. Their relief is shattered when more villains make their presence known. From every which way, they were cornered. Looking to his companions, Izuku decided, we're going to have to fight our way out of this he gets mixed reactions. Asui nods her head, agreeing with him. Well Mita freaks, are you crazy? We're kids he exclaims. What can we do against all these villains? It's a good question, but Izuku could do without the panicking. W were heroes in training. He actually snaps. He thinks about what Kakin would say. So we kick their asses. Maybe a bit too much like Kakin, but it calms the boy down. Looking down at the villains, he notices how they don't make any moves to confront them. What are they waiting for? He wonders. We should explain our quirks to each other. Find a way to use them together Kiro Asui speaks up, and he nods. So they explained their quirks to each other, and when Minda's turn came around they stared at the boy in silence. Unnerved by it, the boy freaks and throws one of his ball thingies into the water. Wait, he shouts but it's too late. The reaction however, is not what he expected. The villains were suddenly very wary of the strange ball. They didn't know about their quirks. That's why they hadn't attacked yet, and why the Black Mist sent Asui to a simulation where her quirk would flourish. They had an advantage. A small one, but an advantage nonetheless. Suddenly a giant fist formed out of water breaks the ship apart, and Izuku grits his teeth. They needed to act now. Asui-san, call me Tsuyu. Kiro I have an idea she nods and he informs them of it. Pulling away from them, he faces the villains and steps onto the railing of the ship. Villains, he shouts, grabbing their attention while Tsuyu grabs Minda and prepares to jump. Not needing a response, Izuku leaps up and as he descends he quickly starts spinning and forms a funnel cloud. As soon as it touches the water, the villains suddenly find themselves thrown about by the violent waves and pulled towards the vortex despite their struggling. What the hell? Leaping into the air, Tsuyu waits for her chance and admires the versatility of Izuku's quirk. Minda frowns, spurred on by Izuku's actions. Minda hurled his black spheres into the vortex as well. I can be hero too, he screamed while crying. The villains found themselves being stuck against each other, and Izuku dropped the vortex as the villains became one writhing mass. Before touching down into the water, he quickly spread his arms and his cape fluttered as it caught the air currents. Smiling to himself, he flew up and exited the area beside his other two classmates. After landing a measured distance away from the shipwreck zone, the three huddled close to each other. I think we should probably head to the class, Kiro Izuku nodded, it would make sense. The villains were mostly gathered around the central plaza, so it would be best to avoid that area. But that was also where their teacher was battling on his own. I think we should help Aizawa-sensei Kiro. Suyu made an unsure sound. Minda shook his head. Wouldn't we just get in his way? He told us to stay back Izuku bit his lip at that. He doesn't know how to argue against that, but something just didn't feel right. They began to move forward, but stopped when their sensei was attacked by one of the leaders. Izuku gasps in horror when he sees the leader's quirk peel away at their sensei's elbow. The man quickly kick him away to gain distance, but it was short-lived as the monstrous form of another villain appeared behind him faster than he could blink and grabbed his head. Sensei, both Tsuyu and Izuku screamed as they watched the creature slam Aizawa's head mercilessly into the floor. 
The impact of it created a small crater, and blood was slowly pooling in it. He wasn't even moving. Namu, keep him there. I'll deal with the children despite the distance between them. Izuku still managed to catch his words. Flinching, he turned to the others to warn them but what was cut off by Tsuyu's panicked cry. Midoriya-chan. She cried, and her tongue darted out towards him. And then he felt the shift. It was so fast, quicker than he could properly react. He looked over his shoulder to see a hand reaching towards his face, and his heart squeezed in terror. Another hand was reaching towards Tsuyu's tongue as well. This is how I die, he thought. Then the hand gripped his face, and also Tsuyu's tongue. But nothing happened. Then Maido exclaimed, Aizawa sensei and it all suddenly made sense. The man had somehow managed to save them at last minutes. But then the villain's next words made his blood run cold. Take care of him. Namu Izuku knew then he needed to do something and fast. If their sensei stopped his quirk now for whatever reason, they'll most definitely die. Then he heard the sickening crunch of bone breaking. On autopilot, his hands sparked. Z z z z z t t t t t t the leader's body sailed through air and crashed on the ground in a twitching mess. His form racked with residual energy. Namu, kill him. The man screeched. Then Izuku felt his hands gripped in a crushing force, and immediately felt his wrist snap just from the strength of the grip. Uh, he cried out, and looked up through teary eyes at the hulking mass in front of him. Kill him now. The USJ's door flew open at that moment, and a figure stepped through. Do not fear Izuku found himself crying for a whole new reason now. Why? Because I am here. All Might was not smiling. As soon as All Might appeared, he was gone as he tore through the villains to reach Aizawa and us. It all happened so fast it nearly gave Izuku whiplash. Take care of your sensei said the hero, placing a hand on Izuku's shoulder. But All Might, it will be alright and with that he turned back to the two villains. And then he was a blur again. It was hard to keep track of him, but he was facing off against the hulking creature. Something seemed off however. No matter how many blows it was struck with, the creature shrugged it all off. Namu's quirk is shock absorption the leader supplied, slowly getting to his feet. He was specifically made to kill you, All Might. He laughed. Izuku felt helpless as he watched his hero struggle against the villain. Turning away, he set his attention on his teacher. He could help him, this was how he'll be useful. Carefully, he lifted one hand over his shoulder and Tsuyu did the same with the other hand. It was a painful task to do, with his wrists the way they were but he manged. Before they could move forward though, Izuku saw out of the corner of his eye that All Might was planning to suplex the villain. But no impact followed the move. Confused, Izuku turned to see just what happened and gasped. The warp villain had prevented the move. And now the Namu creature had half of its body inside the black mist and the upper half had All Might's stomach gripped tightly. They were planning to drag him in halfway then close the warp, successfully cutting the hero in half. Izuku knew that even without hearing the villain. Minda was all he said as he said Aizawa and other boys grasp. And then he was off before they could try and stop him. His wrist still throbbed in excruciating pain, but he pushed through it. With the winds at his beck and call, he flew towards his idol in seconds. He didn't know what he could do, but he knew he had to do something. Then Izuku sensed it. Now that he was familiar with its movements, he knew what to look out for. So with a quick twist, he expertly flew over the warp gate that appeared in his path avoiding it and also blocking a certain someone from view. And then as if they had sensed All Might needed help. Bakugo, Kirishima, and Todoroki appeared. The tables quickly turned as Bakugo pinned the warp villain. And Todoroki used his eyes to free All Might. Kirishima tried to sneakily attack the leader, but he was quickly avoided. Izuku knew how dangerous he was however. So while he still hovered in midair he channeled electricity throughout his body. With his wrists broken, he couldn't shoot the blasts from his hands but he was not limited to just them. Spinning in midair, he rained down bolts of lightning from his body, all centered on the leader. The man cursed under his breath and tried his best to avoid them. He somehow managed to evade most of them, but a few shots still got him. Namu, just like that. The creature sacrificed its own arm and immediately it grew back as if nothing happened. Then it lunged at Katsuki who still had the villain pinned. Kakin, even as he spun and continued his onslaught against the other villain, he could still see what was going on around him. His heart nearly stopped when the creature reached the blonde, but somehow All Might had gotten between them and took the blow. Now that the warp villain was freed, he quickly disappeared and also took their leader with him, then reappeared a safe distance away from them, noticing his target had gotten away. He slowly descended and stumbled into a pair of arms that wrapped securely around him. Hey, you okay bro? Izuku felt himself relax in the hold, he knew that voice. Jay just a little tired. Kirishima nodded, and tightened his hold a little as he went back to surveying the fight. All Might had engaged the enemy again, and they were exchanging blows back and forth. The recoil of them was even strong enough to nearly throw the onlookers off their feet. Izuku felt the redhead shift behind him, and then he was being dragged from the two heavy hitters. He would have protested, wanting to witness what happens, but he understood why they needed to move. It wouldn't help to get in All Might's way, not right now. 
Remember these words creature his voice reached their ears as the creature bounced from the impact it made with the ground. Go beyond, plus ultra. And with a devastating punch, the Namu creature was sent hurtling away through the roof and into the clouds until finally disappearing from view. It was over. They won. Izuku breathed a sigh of relief, and fully slumped against Kirishima who for his part didn't complain, just shifted slightly. All Might stared down the remaining villains. He declared their league of villains was now over. He boldly tells them to come face him, and they hesitate. The leader panics and scratches at his neck as he takes a step back. However, the warp villain surveys the scene more carefully. Just as Izuku was about to turn away from the scene, the villains made a mad leap towards All Might. He was about to dismiss them, thinking All Might could dispatch them easily on his own. But then he noticed his idol's prone figure as they closed in on him. He wasn't moving. Why wasn't he moving? Izuku felt his body react as the leader's pale hand reached towards All Might's chest and the man still hadn't moved. He was so tired, he couldn't even get out of Kirishima's grip. So tired, and in so much pain. But that was alright, he didn't need to get close. He just needs to aim correctly. And for the first time in a long while, his eyes glowed a bright white as the clouds swirled and darkened above the USJ facility. And suddenly almost out of nowhere a blast of lightning shot down between his idol and his attackers, successfully cutting them off. Unlike the other times however, the bolt didn't came and went. Instead it raged between them, and the villains took a shaky step back away from it. Above them all, thunder roared loudly, and it almost seemed like the lightning was alive and telling the men to back down. Slowly, the villain with multiple hands littered around his body, turned his gaze to Izuku. The glare he sent his way so full of hate, but then it gave way to pain as shots ran out throughout the area. At the turn of events, Izuku had snapped to the direction of the sound to find Yua teachers all gathered at the door with Ida in tow. His eyes slowly faded back to their usual vibrant green and the sky brightened once more. Once again, they were saved. Yua voice growled, and Izuku turned to see the leader glaring pure murder at him. I won't forget this and with that the two of them disappear. And finally, Izuku gave into the darkness. Midoriya. In the infirmary Izuku woke with a start, and scrambled upwards only to be halted by a hiss of pain. Blinking through the small tears, he peered down at his hands to find them bandaged. Slowly he began to take in his surroundings, and realized he was in the school's infirmary. I see you're finally awake a voice chirped and Izuku flinched before turning to the sound. Your friends were awfully worried about you after you lost consciousness Izuku turned his head back down to his hands and slowly flexed his fingers. He slowly started to recall the events of the USJ attack and frowned. Is is everyone okay? He didn't say who, but he felt somehow that he didn't need to. Smiling, recovery girl nodded. They're all fine, some more fine than others, but they'll pull through she informed him and he released the breath he had been holding. However he stilled at her words. Since I didn't get to heal your wrists right away, there will be a little scarring. Izuku found his breath again, and gave her a small smile. Is that all? I'm okay with that honestly she turned away from him with a hidden smile. Good. Because there is someone who wanted to speak with you she lifted her cane and wrapped against it the wall several items. And then All Might came through door. I am here, he declared, to thank my student for his strength and bravery. Izuku spluttered, and covered his head with his hands. But All Might, young Midoriya his idol smiled and walked over to him. I am glad to see you doing fine. You gave your classmates a fright when you passed out he placed a comforting hand on his head. I was also worried, but I've known from the time we first met that you were strong he grinned. So thank you, my boy, for what you did back there. Izuku was a stuttering mess. Why 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 your W welcome. All Might ruffled his hair. I must go now. I just wanted to see that you were fine he turned away and made for the door. Continue to grow strong, my boy and with that he left. At his departure, Izuku made a strangled noise and flopped on his bed. Recovery girl only shook her with a fond smile. You're free to go whenever you feel ah, really? Izuku asked, peeking out from behind his hands. She nodded. With that, Izuku got up and got changed in a small room before making his way towards the door. Before leaving, he peeked over his shoulder and smiled. Thank you very much for healing me she gave him a soft smile and shooed him away. Upon stepping out, he quickly noticed the other's presence and tilted his head. Kirishima-kun. Bah. The redhead quickly shot up from his crouched position beside the door and tucked away his phone. Midoriya. You're okay. He gave him a tight hug then pulled back to look him in the eye. You are alright, right? Izuku laughed and nodded. I'm fine. What are you doing here? Pulling his arms away, Kirishima scratched his head. I wanted to make sure you were good dude then his eyes lighted up as he remembered something. Oh, Bakugo waited for you too. But then he left mumbling something how strong the nerd is and how he'll make him pay for waiting around like an extra or something Izuku shivered. He wasn't looking forward to the blonde sour mood. Want to walk together. Blinking, he looked to the other boy who was smiling a small grin and smiled back at him. Sure. Reaching out, Kirishima draped an arm around his shoulders and pulled him in. Bro hug. He grinned and Izuku laughed and gave him a light nudge. They made their way out of the school. 
And along the way, Kirishima never removed his hand. Instead he just pulled the shorter boy closer. The day after the attack, Yua gave us all a day off from classes. The students of 1 especially were grateful for this. Izuku however, wasn't. The hell do you mean physics make your head hurt? Sighing, Izuku watched as his two friends bicker back and forth about classes, heroes, and whatever else they felt should be argued about at this moment. Why exactly did he let these two talk him into hanging out with them again? Katsuki and Kirishima were currently on Izuku's bedroom floor engaged in a heated argument over physics of all things. When the two had shown up earlier that day together, Izuku had been understandably confused. Apparently they didn't plan to both show up at the same time, it just sort of happened. And with that, they happily entered his home and proceeded to barge into his room. He didn't mind their presence, not one bit, but he really could do without the bickering. It was going to be a long day. The next day propped up on his elbows, Izuku idly twirled his braid as Kirishima talked to him about hanging out again, just the two of them. It probably didn't help that Katsuki was right behind him. But the redhead didn't to notice. Or care, said blonde growled and shot the redhead a lethal glare. Huh, you got a problem with me being around, shitty hair. Kirishima only laughed from his perch on Izuku's desk. You know our hair is really similar right? So that means. Izuku banged his head on his desk. At that moment, their mummified homeroom teacher entered the classroom and everyone quieted down. S. Sensei, your Araka broke the silence. Are you sure you should be here? Aizawa nodded. I'm your homeroom teacher, where else would I be? And as if that answered everything. Everyone relaxed in their seats, save Kirishima who was hopping off his desk and making his way to his seat. Clearing his throat, Aizawa swept his gaze over the whole class. All right, despite the attack that took place at USJ, classes will still be held normally several groans were heard at the declaration. But for now, you should focus on something more important. The U, a sports festival ah, uh, isn't that a little too soon? Considering, no, this is one of the most viewed events in the world and a major opportunity to get scouted by professional hero agencies murmurs broke out throughout the class at this. Katsuki scowled. So basically, it's too fucking important to cancel Aizawa nodded. After that class continued on like usual, and all too soon it was time for lunch. Still in their class, the students discussed the upcoming sports festival. As a class they all decided to put the incident behind and instead focus on the festival. Fired up, Yuraka declared to the whole of the class that she was going to do her best and puts her game face on. Izuku laughed lightly at this, and spurred on by his classmates' actions he also declares that he was going to do his very best. You think you're going to beat me, fucking nerd? Didn't he win against you in the battle simulation? Katsuki choked. It was a goddamn draw. Kirishima laughed and nudged Izuku. I'm not going to lose to you either Izu bro smiling. Izuku clenched his fist. Then let's both do our best Iyajiro kun The redhead felt his heart stutter and nearly give way. From his spot, Katsuki watched the two with a familiar scowl. You two deserve each other. Shitty nerds Izuku spluttered and covered his head. K Kaken, TCH unbeknownst to the trio. A pair of heterochromia eyes watched their exchange. Soon though classes were over. Getting up from his seat, Izuku grabbed his bag and slung it across his shoulders. Hey, Midoriya. Blinking, he looked over to see his blonde classmate approaching him, K. Kaminari Kun. Smiling, the boy gave him a thumbs up. Hey, can I ask you something man? Nodding slowly. He agreed, as sure tilting his head, the blonde scratched at his head. Well, I kinda noticed that you could produce electricity from your body like me, and it got me wondering. He trailed off. Izuku smiled. You want to know how I don't short-circuit my brain? Kaminari breathed out. Yes laughing, Izuku shook his head. Well actually, my quirk doesn't have a drawback like that. Izuku watched as the boy's expression drops and hurries to finish what he has to say. He but I always limit my output so I don't accidentally fry someone with it. Kaminari shot him a confused look. Limit your output. How would that help me become stronger? Well, if you controlled your output you should have a longer use of your quirk. That way you won't short circuit from going overboard. And it'll give you more control at each word the blonde's eyes widen. You really think I could do that? Izuku nodded and shot him an easy smile. I think you could be really strong with your quirk Kaminari-kun. By now his eyes were sparkling. You're the best, Midoriya. Ah, thank you he said while rubbing his cheek. If you want, I'd be happy to train with you before the festival that'll be awesome. Kaminari wasted no time agreeing. Thanks man, and no problem. Izu bro, turning away from his classmate Izuku saw Ajiro waving him over. We walking together or what of course? He beamed, turning back to Kaminari. He smiled. I'll talk to you later. The blonde nodded and took out his phone. Give me your digits so we could link up whenever okay Izuku agreed. And they exchanged numbers, making his way over to his friend. Izuku noticed the way he was watching Kaminari. The Jiro-kun, snapping out of it, he turned back to his friend. Hey, what was all that about? Smiling, he told him about what the blonde had asked and how he agreed to train with him. Uh, furrowing his brows, the redhead stared at the ground. 
Then you won't mind if I tag along too right? That'll be great. Perking up, he grinned. Awesome sauce. Will you two idiots hurry the fuck up already? An angry voice broke through their conversation. Turning away, Izuku noticed the blonde waiting by the door. We're coming Kakin. Grumbling the blonde turned away and opened the door. Only to be barricaded by a horde of students gathered outside their class. Yay. So this is class of one they don't seem like much. Did they really fight against villains? Some of them are at least good looking the entire class sweat dropped at their murmurings. They do realize we can hear them, right? Jiru questioned. W why are they all gathered outside our class? Hiroraka squeaked. Scowling, Katsuki leveled them all with a glare. They're here to scout out the competition he says and suddenly the focus is on him. Fucking extras, move out of our way Kakin. Izuku spluttered. The blonde just shrugged his shoulders. So this is class of one. The voice carries out over the crowd. I guess you're right when you say I came here to scout out the competition. Though I don't know about the others a purple-haired boy emerged from the crowd to stare down Katsuki. Though I'm not really impressed with what I see how the blonde's scowl darkens and Izuku steps forward to prevent any fights from breaking out. Sighing, the boy rubs at his neck. Do you know that if we other students do well in the festival, we could be moved into the hero course? He receives several looks of shock from his question. Course you don't. I plan on taking your place in the hero course, and I'm not going to let any of you get in my way he says, declaring war on the entire class. Spurred on by his declaration, another student abruptly shouts his own piece as well. I wanted to see the class that defeated real villains, but all I found was condescending students. TCH Katsuki disregards them all. You're all just shitty stepping stones for me to make my way to the top several heads banged on their desk at his words, while others groaned. You're just going to make them hate us all the more, Bakugo. Ida says, what does it matter? The blonde shrugs, and instead of facing Ida he looks directly to Izuku. It's only important I beat all of you at the festival he says then turns away to cut through the crowd, clenching his fist. Izuku watches the blonde's back. I plan on beating you too, Kakin hurry the fuck up already. See coming. Two weeks later the day of the sports festival had finally arrived, and Izuku was more excited than nervous. Everyone was so pumped up, it made him want to stand out and try his best. He was here to be a hero just like All Might. And this was his was chance to show them all. Beside him Ajiro and Kaminari were animatedly talking about the day's events with each other. During the two weeks when they trained, the two had gotten pretty close. They were bros as they so happily pointed out. It was a little weird, since Ajiro always carried this weird tension whenever the blonde was around during the first few days. Weird indeed, but not unwanted. Smiling, Izuku turned to them to join in the conversation when a voice behind him cut him off. Midoriya looking over his shoulder, he saw his classmate Todoroki watching him. T. Todoroki-kun. The room quieted. Midoriya the boy said his name again, and regarded him coolly. In terms of power, I believe I'm much stronger than you he declares, much to the surprise of his classmates. But for some reason, you have the number one hero's attention clenching his fist, he glares slightly at Izuku. That's why I will defeat you in the festival. Izuku for his part is at a loss of words. This was the first time the other boy had even spoken to him. Stepping in, Ijiro tried to defuse the situation, but Todoroki only shook him off and walked away. I don't think you're stronger than me Todoroki kun at his voice, said boy pauses. I don't really understand what you meant about All Might, but I know that I'm much stronger than you Izuku gives him a fierce look, but everyone here is going to be trying their best. That's why I can't lose to you watching him over his shoulder, Todoroki nods and walks off to his corner. Izu bro, turning back to his friend. Izuku watches as several emotions pass over the redhead's face. You're really cool, you know that. Flushing all the way to his ear, Izuku stutter. Iye. Behind them Kaminari snickered at his own inside joke as he watched the pair. Soon they're all walking out to the freshman stage of the festival stadium. Izuku watches as all the other classes gather around them at the podium, and turns to watch as Midnight makes her way onto stage as the chief referee. He freezes momentarily when his and Katsuki's name is called to lead the pledge. He almost forgot the two had tied for the number one spot. Kajiro gave him a slight nudge forward, and Kaminari gave him a thumbs up. He could do this, probably, making his way onto the stage. He stood beside his blonde friend and looked out to the crowd, breathing in. He glances at the blonde to see if he wanted to say something but instead the boy only shoved him forward. Riding himself, he grabbed the microphone. H hello everyone silence ensues. Swallowing, he continues. I know all of us out here have our own goals in mind, but one thing we share in common with each other is that we want to win today. As so I wish everyone the best, to reach beyond the stars. P plus ultra. The students and onlookers erupted into cheers at the end of his words, and Izuku smiled and stepped away. Before he could move however, Katsuki yanked his hand holding onto the microphone and glared at the students. Despite what this nerd just said, I'm going to kill all of you shitty extras and just like that the cheers changed into loud boos. Izuku sighed and pulled away his hand and followed his friend off the stage. He really shouldn't be surprised at this point. 
Joining his two friends, Izuku watches as Midnight takes the stage once again to explain the preliminaries. They were going to take part in an obstacle race 4 kilometers around the stadium. They were allowed to use their quirks of course. As long as you don't leave the course, you're free to do whatever to your heart's desire. Midnight exclaimed, cracking her whip. Begin. Immediately everyone raced forward towards the entrance, no one wanting to be left behind. But due to their haste, and the tight corridor, they all got packed in together. Realizing this, he jumped into the air just about the same time Todoroki chose to freeze the pathway and raced out ahead. Remembering his words from earlier, Izuku gathers the wind around his feet and rockets off behind him. Landing lightly on his feet and not losing any of his momentum, Izuku gives chase. He notices several of his classmates had also avoided the other's boy move and were gunning for them both. Smiling to himself, he took great pride in knowing he had gotten ahead of Katsuki this early on. He just needed to pass Todoroki and maintain his position in the lead. You think you two are so cool? A voice behind him squeaked. Don't count me out just yet. Todoroki, Midoriya, looking over his shoulder, he sees Minda gaining on them by bouncing on his balls. Just as he's about to pass them however, he's suddenly batted aside by a villain bot that came out of nowhere. Skidding to a stop, he finds their path blocked by other villain bots. Todoroki though, reacts quickly and freezes the bot in front of him off balance and runs under it. But Izuku realizes his ploy, and quickly follows behind while the others stare in amazement. Unperturbed by the cold, Izuku makes it out from under the robot just as it crashes down. Pausing briefly, he picks up a stray part from the robot and then continues to steadily close the gap between himself and the other boy. And just like that, two students of the hero course clear the first obstacle easily. Noticing his approach, the ice user sends a wall of ice in his path to slow him down. Gritting his teeth, he pulls the winds toward himself and spins. A tornado gathers around him and launches Izuku right over the large hurdle. Uh, it seems Todoroki isn't going to make it easy for Midoriya at all they both went through the same thing. They've grown and learned to not hesitate again he lands lightly on his feet and approaches the second obstacle. The foe, a canyon that can only be navigated along the tight ropes. Pausing, he notices Todoroki skating across the ropes by using his eyes. While his quirk is so useful, and his physical abilities make him stand out even more. The onlookers voice, as they watch from their seats. But the Midoriya boy is really light on his feet and quick thinking you're right. With a burst of wind at his feet, he leaps across into the canyon then repeats the action again when he lands until he reaches the end of the canyon. To onlookers he looked a bunny hopping across the canyon, and Midoriya doesn't let up in his relentless path to first place. The sound of explosions quickly approaching makes him quickens his pace to the final obstacle, and neither does Bakugo. Gritting his teeth, he determinedly tries not to look back. Up ahead he notices Todoroki slowed his pace to safely cross the minefield. Quickly taking advantage, he pauses to let Katsuki blow past him and grabs the robot part from across his back. What? Why did Midoriya stop and let Bakugo past him? A racer head. How exactly should I know? Grabbing onto the strap attached to the part, he braces himself and pulls the winds to him once more. This time he lets it flow under the part, and as a result he's launched into air and gaining on his two classmates. Standing upright, Izuku guides the part along the air currents for as long as he can. It would be so much easier to do with his cape, but he'll have to make do. What's this? Midoriya is seemingly surfing the air currents. He surfs over the two prone figures below him as they stop to stare. And Midoriya just took first place. Immediately the two sprang forward, their focus entirely on the boy ahead of them now. As he began to slowly descend, Izuku glanced over his shoulder as the two quickly approached. He had to time this just right. Just as he was close to landing, he pushed down and let the plate go right onto a mine right before Todoroki and Katsuki could pass him. The explosion was enough to give them pause, and also push Izuku to the end of the path. Using the force from the explosion, Izuku spun and let it carry him all the way before landing and rolling then shooting off again. Just what are you teaching these kids? This is just them pushing each other. Their desire to prove themselves. I haven't taught them anything racing down the corridor, Izuku panted heavily. He really worked himself hard back there, and his stamina was slowly running out. The goal was in sight, and so close. He just needed to push himself a little more. Just a bit more and he'd win. The approaching pair of footsteps gaining on him only pushed him forward. So with a last burst of speed, he surged forward to cross the finish line. To be continued. Amek yawning. Izuku made his way towards the familiar clearing he had been training at with Kaminari and Ajira. So far they had made steady progress together, despite the tension. He really didn't know where that came from at all. Stepping into the clearing, he noticed the two standing awkwardly beside each other and sighed. Walking forward, Izuku watched as the two noticed his presence and broke out into huge grins. Izu bro, Midoriya, morning guys smiling at the two, he clapped his hands together, ready to start. Yosh, they both chorused together. 
He laughed as they both stared at each other in surprise. From then they all began their training. Izuku showed Kaminari how to properly feel out and guide his electricity, while Kirishima worked on strengthening his quirk. Like this. No, no Izuku shook his head. Then he got an idea. Hijiro Kun, come over here. Walking over, the redhead stood beside his friend. What's wrong? Ah, uh, I was wondering if we could borrow you for a little Ajiro eyed the blonde, and then turned back to Izuku. How can I help? Well, we need your quirk. I think Kaminari needs a more hands-on approach. And with your quirk you shouldn't get hurt Izuku explained. Shouldn't. The redhead arched a brow, and again shot a suspicious glance to the blonde who quickly raised his hands and stepped back. Wouldn't. He quickly corrected himself. He wouldn't get hurt Kaminari side when Ajiro took his suspicious gaze off of him and smiled at Izuku. Alright then, let's do this immediately after he hardens up. Okay Kaminari, just watch me and do what I do Izuku says, and pulls forth the familiar currents. Gathering it in his palms, he gives the redhead's shoulder a light tap and sparks erupt from the contact. Ijiro's brow gave the slightest twitch before straightening out once more. That's it. Nodding, Izuku turned to Kaminari. Just now I channeled a light spark to my hands and sent it into Ijiro Kun's body Izuku explained. If it wasn't for his quirk, he'd be momentarily paralyzed w what? Ah, uh, don't worry Ijiro Kun. I wouldn't put you in danger like that if I didn't know what I was doing hearing this. Ijiro felt himself relaxing. I want to try, then immediately tensing up again. Good. Stepping forward, Izuku held out his hand towards the blonde. Try it out me. We don't want to hurt Ajiro Kane. But won't it hurt you? Before Izuku could answer, Ajiro pulled him back. Are you crazy? You could get permanently paralyzed. He exclaimed. He doesn't know what he's doing. Hey. Shaking his head, Izuku placed a hand on his friend's shoulder. You trust me, don't you Ajiro Kun? The redhead nodded. Then let me do this. Besides, it won't hurt me. The same way electricity doesn't bother Kaminari Kun. It doesn't bother me also that's so cool. The blonde exclaimed. We're a lot alike. Ajiro twitched at that, and Kaminari gave him a look. After that, Izuku had Kaminari try it out on him and true to his words, it didn't affect him. After several tries, the blonde got it down. Hey, I feel like I can better control my output. The technique is also helpful in that way. It's a good way to learn control Izuku smiled. I knew you'd get it. Ajiro felt a sour feeling surging in his chest as he watched the two interact, and knew immediately what it was. He was jealous, turning away. He made to walk back over to his spot but a hand on his shoulder stopped him. Looking over his shoulder, he saw Kaminari sporting an uncomfortable look. Away from them stood Izuku working on his quirk. I just want to point out that. The blonde gulped. Midoriya and I are just friends. He's really cool, but we're just friends he said, staring right into Ajiro's eyes to get the message across. Ajiro felt his shoulders relaxing. You're not. Nope. He's a cool guy and all. But I'm not interested like that Ajiro nodded. Thanks. For telling me Kaminari grinned. Besides, I don't stand a chance. Hey. Laughing the blonde turned and walked away, leaving behind a confused redhead. What does that mean? The blonde only continued to laugh. As soon as he crossed the finish line, he was assaulted by the sound of applause echoing around him. And Midoriya crosses first. The applause only got louder, as the spectators all began cheering for him. A little dazed from it all, he ducked his head and smiled a small smile. He did it, he said he would and he did. And coming in second is Todoroki. Hearing this, he glanced up to see the other boy panting a few ways from him. And third, Bekugo. He beat them. He beat both of them. Izuku gave a little cheer to himself, and his blonde friend scowled at him. You just got lucky. He roared then marched off as others finished the race. Soon they were all gathered together as Midnight explained the second round event, the cavalry battle. All the students who qualified had 15 minutes to make teams of 2 to 4 people and everyone's point value depended on their placement in the obstacle race. Which means, Izuku gulped as he felt all eyes on him immediately. Your teams will be worth your members' accumulated point value. The objective of this round is to steal as many points as possible and raise your team's points. The battle will only be 15 minutes, and only the top four will advance to the finals midnight cracked her whip. Any questions? If they were, no one voiced them. Good. Now team up. She barked, delighted to see them scamper about. Izuku knew already the one person he definitely wanted on his team. The problem was trying to locate the team, turning every which way. He finally located a familiar shade of red. Ijiro Kun. He practically bounced up to the boy. Team up with me. Uh, the redhead smiled and rubbed his head. Izu bro, I'd love to team up with you. But I won't Izuku felt his smile slip off his face. H ha. Huh. Frantically Ijiro waved his arms about. Not wanting a misunderstanding. Nothing against you or anything. You're my best bro. He grinned. But I want to beat you. Izuku Izuku blinked. Beat me. I will. You see taking a breath, the redhead looked Izuku in the eyes. I kinda noticed how determined you were to beat Todoroki and Bakugo. 
You were really fired up. And it was like those two were all that mattered he clenched his fists at his sides. I get why you'd want to beat them, they're both strong. But Izuku, I'm strong too grinning. He raised one of his fists and pushed it against Izuku's chest. I wanna beat you Izu bro, so come at me with that manly spirit too, yeah. Izuku looked at his friend and willed his heartbeat to shut the hell up. Mimicking the other, he also placed a fist against the other's chest. I'll give it my all. Ijiro kun smiling, Ijiro nodded and walked away. Spurred on by his friend's determination, Izuku set off to find some teammates. He somehow managed to get Yuraraka, Hatsume, and Takoyami. Well more accurately, they got him since they came up to him. Yuraraka had approached him because she wanted to stand out more, and the best way to do that was at the top. It also helps we're already friends too Izu-chan. She had said, Hatsume may had brashly asked to join his team, hoping to use his first place status to show off her creations, or rather babies. He didn't see a reason to turn her down, she could be helpful. Their third and last member was the most baffling. Takoyami had approached them while they were deciding who to choose, and he just inserted himself. Nobody really questioned it, since Takoyami didn't explain why exactly he joined. And now, with all that out of the way, Izuku stood at the top held up by his team members. Yuraraka stood to his right, Hatsume at his left, and Takoyami alongside Dark Shadow stood at the front. After every team was formed, they all stood ready for the chaos that was about to descend. Raising her hand, Midnight swept her gaze across the field and licked her lips. Begin. Everyone charged, and Majority made a beeline for Izuku's team. Yuraraka, right, activating her quirk. She lightened them all and Izuku propelled them all upwards with a burst of wind. However they weren't out of danger yet, as Jiru used her earphone jacks to go after them. Takoyami quickly reacts and bats them aside using dark shadow. Your quirk is so cool, Takoyami-san. Izuku praised, and the hybrid boy smirked. They landed a few feet away from the battle, but danger was always around the corner as Shoji charged towards them. He nearly made the mistake of thinking he was alone. That was until those familiar spheres were hurled at him. Quick thinking on his part is what saved them, as he redirected their trajectory away from them. Now Hatsume, time to shine my babies. She grinned and clicked some switch. Immediately the jet boots Takoyami's feet flared to life and they skidded across the field at a shocking speed. When they came to a stop, Izuku breathed amazed. Your babies are amazing Hatsume said. The girl grinned pleased at this. Out of the frying pan and into the fire. Izuku bit his lip as Team Bakugo barreled towards them, familiar explosions popping in the blonde's hand. Looking away, he noticed Ajiro leading the charge in his hardened form and he found himself momentarily distracted by the grin on the redhead's face see cute. Izu-chan, Midoriya, snapped out of his thoughts. Izuku squeaked at Bakugo's close proximity. The blonde had jumped away from his teammates to make a grab for Izuku's headband. With quick movements, he summoned a quick gust under the blonde that sent him skyward and away from them. Immediately the blonde was struck by a piece of tape and reeled back towards his team. Izuku wasted no time to put some distance between them. Chancing a glance over his shoulders, he caught Ajiro's eye as his team lectured Bakugo. The redhead sent him a quick grin before moving off again. What happened back there, Izu-chan? Yuraraka asked. I uh, I just got a little distracted he rubbed his head and smiled. It won't happen again guys. Sorry subject dropped. They put their focus back on the battle. Team Midoriya seems to be doing well keeping their spot at the top. Out of the corner of his eye, Izuku noticed Class 1B's assault against 1A and relaxed slightly. I think we can play it cool for now. They won as if called. Team Todoroki confronts them cutting off their path. Regarding him coolly, Todoroki gestures to the headband on his head. I'll be taking that 10 million now clenching his fist. Izuku stared back. Soon they were being surrounded by other teams. But with a jolt of electricity and a blast of ice they were all halted in their spots and had their headbands taken. Now it was just Team Midoriya and Team Todoroki again. Kaminari sent him a quick wink, and he knew what was coming. Takoyami. As soon as the jolt came, Dark Shadow was out and deflecting it. Gritting his teeth, Takoyami drew back his companion. Midoriya. Izuku nodded and looked to the sky. He remembered what the other team told him about his quirk, and he already devised a quick way to help him out. His eyes changed from their usual green to a startling white, and on command dark clouds began to darken the sky. Is that good? Takoyami-san. The teen nodded his head in approval, and Dark Shadow cheered. Yahoo! It was dark enough for Dark Shadow to be stronger, but also enough for Takoyami to keep control of his quirk. Every move Todoroki made, Izuku was able to thwart him. If they kept this up, time would run out soon and they'll keep their first place. All they had to do was stay on his left side. Of course the plan sounded well and good, but a sudden shift in the air and a burst of speed had him recoiling in shock. Hatsum, quick! The boots on Takoyami's feet lit up again 
and they barely dodged Todoroki's outstretched hand. But then Ida was turning and suddenly they were stuck in place by the ice at their feet. That was all they needed, as Todoroki quickly snatched their headband, gritting his teeth. Izuku glanced at the timer to see how much longer they had. Maybe we should go after other headbands, Takoyami suggested. Not much time. We can't gather enough looking down at his team members, he frowned. Do you guys trust me? He asked, while he worked on freeing their feet. Of course, let's get our points back. Yes, Takoyami nodded. Good, cause we only have this one chance to accompany his words. There was a low rumble of thunder that made Todoroki instantly wary. With great control, Izuku made it rain just around them. A heavy downpour blinded Team Todoroki's vision and the members of Team Midoriya, but Izuku could see just fine. Now, what's this? The weather is scheduled to be sunny Midoriya. He's getting better at controlling his quirk. No longer does it affect everyone in the vicinity but only who it's meant to affect Hatsum fired one of her grappling into the wall behind Team Todoroki, and Yuraka made them all lighter. Kaminari. I can't. We're all soaked. I don't know what to create or where to aim it. The jet boots lit up once again, and with a blast of speed they blurred past them, grabbing two of their headbands along the way, skidding to a halt. Izuku lets up on the downpour and looks at his hand. He got it. The 10 million points was back in his grasp, along with 70 points as well and Midoriya secures back first place, placing Todoroki in third. Looking behind him, Izuku was immediately locked in a fierce glare by Todoroki. Steam was rising around them, drying their forms. They were preparing for another move. D.I.K.U. A familiar bellow pulled their attention to the sky as an angry blonde descended upon them. And here comes Bakugo into the fray. A.H.H.H. Just as he was about to reach them, the buzzer sounded. Tamiya. With a flop, Katsuki face planted. Aurora the rest of his teammates soon joined him, and watched amused as the blonde yell his frustrations. And with that ends the cavalry battle. I'll list the four teams moving forward now Izuku looked up at that. In first place, Team Midoriya. Yuraka glomped him and squealed loudly, while Hatsum gave him a brief thumbs up before going back to working on her babies. Takoyami nodded with a small smile. It was. Exciting working with you Izuku beamed. In second place, we have Team Bakugo. Mina, Siro. And Ajiro cheered and high-fived each other while their leader grumbled loudly. Izuku met Ajiro's eye and gave him a hesitant wave. The cheery redhead responded with two thumbs up, prompting a laugh out of Izuku. In third, Team Todoroki. Todoroki clenched his fist and glared at his feet. I'm sorry Yeirazu smiled and shook her head. You did fine. No need to apologize he nodded and turned away. Beside them, Ida wailed. I'm sorry. Yeirazu sweat dropped. Their fourth team member bounced his way over to where Ajiro and Izuku stood and in fourth, Team Shinzo. Noticing the blonde's approach, Izuku grinned. Kaminari kun Hey, congrats dude. Rubbing his cheek, Izuku laughed lightly. Thanks, you were amazing out there. Yeah, Kaminari literally lit up. It's cause you're so cool at teaching. Izuku covered his head causing the blonde to laugh at him. Congrats to you too Kirishima. It must have been hard working with that hothead the fuck you said. Katsuki roared, stomping over. Kaminari jumped and hid behind Izuku. Don't let him eat me. You damn Pikachu bastard. Pikachu. Izuku laughed, and Ajiro smiled. Don't forget about me. Izu bro looking up at his friend. He smiled. Never unbeknownst to the two blondes, Ajiro and Izuku shared a deep glance before both their faces erupted into a deep red. Midori at his name. The four of them turned to the newcomer. Todoroki-kun. Frowning, said boy flexed his hands. I want to talk he voiced, then swept his gaze over the others. Alone fuck that. Izuku groaned, and tugged on his braid. Kaken. What the hell, Deku? Katsuki frowned and crossed his arms. Why the hell do you have to go alone to talk to this peppermint bastard? Um, Kaminari piped up, shifting uncertainly. He's standing right there dude. Todoroki arched a brow. Izuku spluttered, and Kaminari cackled. K. Kaken. The blonde shrugged, pouting. Izuku gave him a sharp glare then turned to face the cause of this madness. Let's talk then. Todoroki-kun said boy nodded, and the two made to leave. What the? Izuku I'll be fine. Katsuki said boy paused at hearing his first name. Smiling towards his three friends, he turned away and walked off with the dual user. So, what are the chances Midoriya might accept Todoroki's confession? You little Pikachu motherfu with Izuku and Todoroki. 
The two stood by the faculty entrance, both on opposite sides of each other. Izuku fidgets as Todoroki only silently stares at him, an uneasy feeling settled in his gut. Maybe I should have stayed with the others after all swallowing. He caught the other boy's gaze. You know, we should probably get lunch before time runs out. Todoroki only continued to stare at him, not bothering with a response. Izuku gulped and shifted. Was the other boy mad at him for beating him in the cavalry battle? He quickly shook away the thoughts. That was ridiculous, right? Your power. Lifting his head slightly, Izuku watched as Todoroki frowned as if he was struggling with something. You're able to create and control weather phenomena, correct? Izuku blinked and rubbed at his neck. I, um, I guess. Yes, he answered lamely. I've never heard of a quirk like that before Todoroki continued, scrutinizing the other boy. All quirks are different. They may carry some similarities, but they're still ultimately different Izuku swallowed, not quite sure where the other was going with this. But you, your quirk allows you to affect the world around you. And there are a lot of other quirks that do that, but none of them are as drastic as yours awkwardly. Izuku shifted his gaze every which way, refusing to meet the boy's gaze across from him. What exactly was he even trying to imply right now? That his quirk was so powerful it was unfair. Well, that seemed a little hypocritical. A new quirk that hasn't been recorded yet in history. The ability to affect nature Todoroki pushed himself off the wall, backing Izuku up against the opposite wall as he cornered the other boy. Are you? Furrowing his brows, he looked down at Izuku as he shifted nervously. Are you a demigod or something? A. A slight breeze blew past them. Izuku stared. I'm sorry, what? At his tone, Todoroki frowned, perplexed. Are you? Izuku breathed out and watched as the boy towering over him glared down at him as minutes ticked by and he still hadn't given the boy an answer. Opening his mouth, he shook his head. That's not it at all. He spluttered. That's why how I'm an ordinary kid. Stepping away, Todoroki regarded the other boy as if what he said was ridiculous. You're not a demigod. Izuku shook his head so fast, he nearly gave himself whiplash. But your quirk, I is it really that far-fetched Todoroki-kun? Izuku sighed. Your quirk allows you to control two opposite elements. Kaken has explosive sweat, and Yao Momo creates objects from her body reaching up. He tugged on his braid. I get it that my quirk seems really flashy and strong, but that's only because I made it that way Izuku caught the other's gaze, his green eyes shining brightly, as if his quirk was activated. I wasn't born with a strong quirk, I made it a strong quirk, because it's my power, and I'm going to use it to save everyone Todoroki watched the other boy, as if seeing him in a whole new light, understanding a little bit more of the teen before him, and he couldn't help but admire him. Clenching his fists, he felt himself opening up to the other boy, something he never thought he'd ever do. My father, he's obsessed with beating All Might, but he was never able to do it he glared at a random spot on the ground. He never stopped trying, he still continues to breathing out, he looked at Izuku from the corner of his vision. Have you ever heard of quirk marriages? At the sharp intake of breath, Todoroki turned his gaze away. He used his money to buy out my mother's family, so he could marry her, and create a powerful child. He created me, to achieve his goal and beat All Might. To become the number one hero Todoroki swept his gaze over the boy, watching to see if he was still listening. My mother, all my memories of her are of her crying. She called my left side, his side, unbearable before she poured boiling water over it he locked gazes with Izuku. Midoriya, I think out of my classmates, you're the one my father would categorize as strong. That's why, I want to beat you. In front of him without using his power he didn't wait for a response, he's not even sure he wanted one. But Izuku wasn't one to let things go just like that. Todoroki-kun said boy paused at his name. I'm going to give it my all. You should too saying nothing. The dual user left. Izuku balled his fists and watched him leave. Unbeknownst to the two, Katsuki stood against the wall, secretly listening in on their conversation. Scene change after lunch. Izuku gathered with the rest of the students as present Mike explained a few things to them about the recreational games. For the most part, Izuku tuned them out as he found his thoughts circling around one of his classmates. After the conversation they had, he was admittedly a little unsettled by it all. He never thought a parent could be someone like what Todoroki described his father to be. Maybe though, he wasn't one to judge, given that his own father wasn't around in his life. But he never gave it any thought, and his mother never talked about him. It was as if he was never there. But he never questioned it, not until now, where he wondered if his father was anything like Todoroki's, or if he was different. Thoughts like those circled around his head, but only one stood out the most. What kind of person was Hisashi Midoriya? He was drawn out of his thoughts, by the crack of a whip. All right, you lot. Midnight voiced. I want you all to draw lots, to see who'll be facing in the final round she cracks her whip again. This round will be a one-on-one -on -one fighting competition, so line up. She shouted, then smirked as they scrambled to do as told. As they all shuffled along to draw lots, Izuku noticed one of his classmates stood off to the side. Raising his hand, Ajiro withdrew from the competition. 
NHHH, you can't. You've worked so hard. Why would you drop out now? Ajiro kun. I'm sorry, everyone, he says. But, for some reason, I can't remember clearly what happened in the last battle. I only remember up to the last bit. But everything else is a blur clenching his fist. He sends a harsh glare to a familiar purple haired boy. It doesn't feel right to me. To proceed without knowing how I've reached this far, TCH Shinso scoffed. Before Ajiro could say something, another student also withdraws from the competition with the same reasoning. Midnight regards the two boys. Though, such passionate youths. Her whole demeanor shifts, as he coos as the two. I'll allow it. Some of the other teachers face palmed. Now however, they were two empty slots that needed to be filled. It was decided Team Tetsu Tetsu would fill in the spot. Now that's all settled. It's time to see who you all will be facing for the first round she turned. And cracked her whip towards the screen and the matchups came up. Izuku Midoriya vs. Shouto Todoroki Hantasiro vs. Hitoshi Shinzo Ibarra Shizaki vs. Denki Kaminari Mina Ashido vs. Momonye Arazu Fumikage Takoyami vs. Katsuki Bakugo. The Jiro Kirishima vs. Tetsu 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 Achako Yuraka vs. Yuvia Hiyama Tenya Ita vs. Mei Hatsume It was just his luck that his match was up first, and it had to be with Todoroki. Chancing a glance towards his opponent, he watched as the other stared down at his clenched fist. As if sensing his eyes upon him, Todoroki looked up and caught his gaze. Izuku held his breath, and Todoroki watched him coolly. Then he was turning away, and Izuku found he could breathe normally again, turning away. He made his way over to his bickering group they were always seen together these days, they might as well be a group. Oi, Pikachu bastard. Don't you dare lose after Deku had to go out of his way to train your lousy asso. Kaminari smirked. Is that your way of wishing me luck bro? You're a lot more friendly than I thought what was that? Growling, Katsuki grabbed the other boy in a headlock. Say something smart again, I fucking dare ya. Back, uncle, uncle, Izuku snickered at their antics. Beside him, Ijiro gave him a light nudge. Hey, I know you probably don't need it and all, since you're awesome and stuff. The redhead rubbed the back of his neck, a light flush settling on his cheeks. But good luck out there, Izuku. I'm rooting for you Izuku felt his whole body flush at his friend's words, and he squeaked. Why you too? He spluttered. I I mean, you're awesome. No, wait, that's not not that you're not. I mean, Izuku groaned, and Ajiro laughed. Shut up. Sorry, sorry Ajiro grinned. That was pretty cute as soon as the words left his mouth. They both stiffened. Um, I, Ijiro kun I gotta go. While wait, Izuku blinked as his friend scrambled away. Ijiro just called me. See cute oi, Deku H huh? Looking up, Izuku noticed the two blondes watching him curiously. Shouldn't you go get ready for your match, idiot ah, you're right. Excuse me. And much like his friend did previously, Izuku quickly scrambled away. Time skip it wasn't long till suddenly the match was upon them. After the recreational games, and Cementos building the fighting arena, the finals were finally beginning. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we give you the first match of the UA. Sports Festival present Mike's voice boomed, but one who has been leading in first place from the very beginning. With a quirk as shifting as the tides, Izuku Midoriya. The crowd cheers as he makes his way onto the arena. And his opponent, the one who has been one step behind him for the entire festival, the half-hot half-cold user, Shouto Todoroki. More cheering ensued as Todoroki made his way onto the arena, standing across from him. These two have been trying to one-up the other, and now it all boils down to this. Who will be the winner of this clash? Begin. Almost immediately, Todoroki sends a huge ice prison towards Izuku who flinches back at the massive size of it all. He briefly thinks back to Aizawa's words at the apprehension test. But that moment of hesitation was all it took for him to be caught up in the freezing wave. And Todoroki wastes no time. Is Midoriya okay? From her spot, Midnight angles her head towards where Izuku would be frozen only to blink as the boy thaws himself out and faces Todoroki once more. And Midoriya is fine. Erase her head. You have some scary kids. Not willing to give him a moment to breathe, Todoroki quickly closes the distance between them, intending to instead physically throw Izuku out of bounds. Izuku let him. The moment the dual user grabbed Izuku's arm, he was zapped from the physical contact and pushed back. Wringing his hands, Todoroki glared. But he wasn't finished. And with a quick sweep of his arms skywards, he sent a gust of wind towards his opponent which knocked him off his feet and pushed him to the edge of the arena. With some quick thinking on his part, Todoroki managed to save himself by placing an ice wall behind him. Getting back to his feet, Todoroki retaliated with wave after wave of ice but they were all blocked by the cyclone that ferociously swirled around Izuku blocking all outside attacks. Growling, he ran forward once more to attack Izuku head-on. When he reached close enough, he raised his palm toward Izuku and watched as his eyes widened, already guessing at what he was about to do. Izuku quickly picked up the wind's speed and power, just as Todoroki sent another huge blast of ice his way at point-blank. 
dredging up all his power. He summoned the most powerful winds he could and the two opposing forces collided head on, pushing both boys a few ways back. Amazing. The crowd leaned forward in their seats, cheering them on to do their best. Their classmates watched them with bated breaths, concerned and excited for them. Coughing, the two got to their feet and glared at the other. Looking over his form, Izuku noticed how Todoroki was shivering as the ice crawled over his body. He came to a realization then, and frowned. Didn't you say you were going to give it your all? Todoroki froze up. Izuku shot off towards him, the wind allowing him to cross the distance easily, allowing him to land a solid punch across his opponent's cheek. Use your power, Todoroki. Dual-colored eyes snapped open, and shifting his momentum he grabbed Izuku's outstretched hand and shoulder tossed him right onto the ground, knocking the air out of him. I told you, I'll beat you without using his power. Pushing up on his arms, Izuku fell into a handstand and kicked the other boy under his chin with a blast of wind adding to the impact and propelling him skyward. It's your power, isn't it? Todoroki's breath hitched, and the memory of their earlier conversation played back in his mind. Because it's my power, and I'm going to use it to save everyone clenching his fist. He felt that same feeling of admiration swirl through him, and he understood. It's my power, twisting his body in midair. Todoroki glared down at Izuku with a smirk. He promised he's give it his all after all. Pushing his palm out, he sent a stream of flames down at his opponent. Upon landing, he watched as the flames swirled and then dissipated. But that was alright, it was meant to be a distraction anyways. With both his sides activated, he attacked Izuku once more, letting both his elements shoot out towards him. Izuku felt the familiar crackle of energy in his hand as he watched the elements cut their way across the field and head straight for him. Raising his hands, he grinned, the telltale sparks firing off his hands. Cementos, Midnight shouted, and he let it go.